Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. Before we start with the Congress, I just uh, give the floor to the Secretary General in order to test the e-voting system. Please, Fadma. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You must have received by now your e-voting device. And if uh, you would like to vote in favor of a motion presented, you just have to press the green button, yes. If you want to vote against the motion, you need to press no. And if you abstain, just press abstain. But always remember to press the submit button during the uh, e-voting window, which lasts 15 seconds. The vote starting now. And after, I would say, the vote is closed. It is during only that window that your vote will be validated. Now, let's run for the first test. And uh, the question is as follows. Is the 67th FIFA Congress taking place in Manama? If you approve the motion, the question, press yes. If you disagree, press no or abstain for abstention. Then press submit. The vote is starting now. The vote is closed. Let's wait for the results. Result mentions members entitled to vote 209, member present and entitled to vote 208, valid cast, vote cast 172, the majority voted for yes, 93%, motion passed. Let us run the second test this time. Having that, hoping that more vote will be validated. If you're ready. Are Germans the current men world champion? Yes to approve. No to vote against. And red abstain. And please submit in few seconds when I said the vote start. Now the vote start. Ladies and gentlemen, the vote is closed and the result will be announced in a few seconds. The result shows 168 vote valid and cast. The vote required for a simple majority of valid vote is 85. So the yes is 93%, so the motion is passed. The floor is back to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. So now that we know that the Congress is taking place in Manama and that Germany is the world champion, we can have a look at the quick video before the welcome. Please.
Highness, dear Sheikh Nasser, dear members of the Council, dear delegates, dear legends, dear friends, a very warm welcome here in Manama, in Bahrain, for the 67th FIFA Congress. It is an honor and a pleasure for FIFA, for the world of football to be here in Bahrain. And we would like to thank you for the very warm welcome we received in this country. Shukran Jazilan. And Ahlan Wasahlan, of course, again to all the members. Let me start uh, by welcoming in particular, as well, our legends. Our legends who are sitting here in the first row and uh, who are actually the main protagonists of our game. We, as administrators, presidents, general secretaries, members, we have to make sure that we work, that we work professionally, that we work seriously, that we prepare the stage for the actors to shine. We are not the actors. We are not the protagonists. They are the protagonists, and they make our hearts beat. They make the hearts of millions, of billions of people in the world beat. And they have made football what football is today. They make for football much more than what we, any one of us, can ever do. And we have to recognize that, and we have to thank them for that. Muchas gracias, shukran, thank you. Continue to give us a lot of emotion, please. <laughs> Having said that, I see that uh, in spite of uh, the football tournament yesterday night, and by the way, Mabruk uh, to the Bahrain Football Association selection, Dear Sheikh Nasser, next time we count on you to play with us, but with the FIFA selection, because we need some uh, strong people. Congratulations, Mabruk, to, to Bahrain for winning the first FIFA Congress Challenge. And I can see that in spite of that, you are still here and you are fit. I have pain everywhere. I don't know how you feel. But actually, I recognized something yesterday night. Since I was elected on the 26th of February last year, I was thinking, for more than a year now, what is actually the benefit of being a FIFA president? And I didn't find the answer. And at some stage I said, well, maybe the benefit is to be able to play with these legends, to play with you and to enjoy. But actually, after the match of yesterday night, I have the answer. The benefit of being FIFA president is that when you play in some exhibition games like yesterday night, not exhibition because it was serious, in some games like yesterday night, after the games, everyone or almost everyone comes to you as FIFA president and tells you, you played very well. <laughs> so at least there is one benefit of being FIFA president, but you lie very good. Thank you very much. Enjoy the Congress. Welcome. And uh, we speak later. Thank you very much. And now I would like to hand over the floor to His Royal Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Representatives for Charity and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee. Please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, Distinguished FIFA President Mr. Gianni Infantino, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, President of the Asian Football Fed Confederation, Confederation Presidents, FIFA Council Members, FIFA Member Associations, Distinguished Guests, Members of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. 
It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you today on behalf of His Majesty and my fellow Bahraini men and women to our country. This is a monumental day for our nation as we host the global football family under one roof. We do thank the FIFA for providing us with the opportunity to gather the greatest minds of policy makers and shapers of the football today in Bahrain. This adds another dimension to our national vision to be an island that hosts and supports, organizes, develops and participates in success of the global sport movement in all its form. Developing the sports sector with its various components is not only a formal mandate that I am honored to undertake but also one of my personal missions that I hold near and dear to my heart. I believe I don't speak only on my behalf when I say that from early childhood sports presented the first encounter with impact and challenges of teamwork, how to form a united front despite having diverse backgrounds and abilities. And more importantly, how to accept and recognize the strengths and weaknesses of the individuals and the team as a whole. As the years pass, sports have grown to become an indis indispensable uh, part of our lives and at times the best icebreaker. This enabled us to grow with an even ever more appreciation from the tremendous role diversity. Fair play and tolerance play as ensuring sports remain a force for good. Historically, sports such as falconry, horse racing, and camel racing have been a strong, have been a strong aspect of our tradition and culture as a nation. Evolving over centuries from means of survival to developed sports practices and more recently as well preserved intangible cultural heritage of humanity with the support of the UNESCO. With the development of our modern state in the 19th century, our leadership has advocated the value of sport in transforming communities, bringing them together and introducing positive social change. As a result, we have been encouraged and empowered as officials, sportsmen and women, and even sports enthusiasts to be champions for sport. In Bahrain, we don't dream small, we dream big. This year, Bahrain held its 13th edition of the F1 Grand Prix. In 2004, Bahrain was the first country in the region to have a F1 Grand Prix organized on its soil. But in 2016, our very own Bahraini F1 organizers were in Baku exporting our robust know-how in organizing a world-class race. As we speak in the Congress right now, Bahrain Merida team, the first pro cycling team from the region, is competing in the Giro d'Italia. I had to do that to make it more Italian. With the eyes of our local cycling talents, on, I, I can't stop doing that now. <laughs> With the eyes of our local cycling talents on Nibali and his colleagues as a source of inspiration, our Bahrain Endurance 13 triathlon team continues to conquer more races around the global and help us develop homegrown, world-class triathletes. And most notably, our athletes have grabbed the highest number of gold medals from the region in the Rio Olympics. Having said that, football, no doubt, remains the sport that colors every Bahraini. Passions for football are not only peaking during local leagues, Gulf Cups, regional tournaments, and the World Cup, but also during local leagues in other continents. Such passions must be utilized. This is why we wholeheartedly support FIFA's and the AFC's vision for the future to enhance football's role as a powerful tool for social development and inclusion. On a competitive level, 
We take pride in our women's national football team, the first female football team from the region. Since its formal inception, the team has gone a long way and made history in 2014 as the first female team from the region to play against a European team. The result is not necessary. <laughs> we support them and admire them as they continue to shatter cultural misconceptions whilst furthering their international reach. Our men's national team continues to learn from its various local, regional and international expertise. We still remember vividly 2006 and 2010 when our national team was one goal away from the World Cup and in the international playoffs. If any Kiwi is here, I'm going to have a talk outside. With the new introduction of a 48-team FIFA World Cup, we remain more hopeful than ever of future opportunities of our national team and other aspiring national, nations around the world to reach the World Cup. Mr. President, distinguished guests, it is a privilege for the Kingdom of Bahrain to become a meeting place in 2017 for the masterminds behind global football. My message to you as sports administrators is to encourage joint projects and cross-continental efforts. Let's widen participation and turn football into a true catalyst for diversity, tolerance and excellence. In 2022, the FIFA World Cup, inshallah, will be hosted for the first time in the Middle East. The whole region will be buzzing with anticipation and enthusiasm. I turn my fellow football enthusiasts and urge them to benefit from the beauty of football that stems from its ability to transform you as individual every step of the way, whether you win or lose. In football, you learn by playing, so let's play. We hope that you all enjoy and enjoyed your time in Bahrain, and you will come and visit us again soon, inshallah. Thank you very much, wa shukra. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Nasser, and um, I would like also, of course, to uh, thank Sheikh Salman, the president of AFC, who happens to be from Bahrain as well, for the warm welcome, as well as Sheikh Ali, the president of the Bahrain Football Association, and all, all the Bahraini people for welcoming us so warmly in this beautiful country. Thank you very much. Now, before we move to the next agenda item, I would like to ask you to stand uh, up for a minute of uh, silence in memory of those that we lost in the last year. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Our thoughts and our gratitude to all these people who have worked for football and operated in football. Thank you. Good. Now we can move to the next agenda item, which is item number two. They're all called. Fatma. Thank you, President. Let's proceed with the roll call. Afghanistan present. Albania present. Algeria present. American Samoa present. Andorra present. Angola present. Anguilla present. Antigua and Barbuda present. Argentina present. Armenia present. Aruba present. Australia present. Austria present. Azerbaijan present. The Bahamas present. Bahrain present. Bangladesh present. Barbados present. Belarus present. Belgium present. Belize present. Benin present. Bermuda present. Bhutan present. Bolivia present. Bosnia and Herzegovina present. Botswana present. Brazil present. British uh, Virgin Island present. Brunei Darussalam present. Bulgaria present. Burkina Faso present. Burundi present. Cambodia present. Cameroon present. Canada present. Cape Verde Island present. Cayman Island present. Central African Republic present. Chad present. Chile present. China PR present. Chinese Taipei present. Colombia present. Comoros present. Congo present. Congo Democratic Republic present. Cook Island present. Costa Rica present. Cote d'Ivoire present. Croatia present. Cuba present. Curaçao present, Cyprus present, Czech Republic present, Denmark present, Djibouti present, Dominica present, Dominican Republic present, Ecuador present, Egypt present, El Salvador present, England present, Equatorial Guinea present, Eritrea present, Estonia present, Ethiopia present, Faroe Islands present, Fiji present, Finland present, France present, Gabon present, The Gambia present, Georgia present, Germany present, Ghana present, Gibraltar present, Greece present, Granada present, Guam <coughs> present, Guatemala present, Guinea present, Guinea Bissau present, Guyana present, Haiti present, Honduras present, Hong Kong present, Hungary present, Iceland present, India present, Indonesia present, Islamic Republic of Iran present, Iraq present, Republic of Ireland present, Israel present, Italy present, Jamaica present, Japan present, Jordan present, Kazakhstan present, Kenya present, 
DPR Korea, present. Korea Republic, present. Kosovo, present. Kuwait, present. Kyrgyz Republic, present. Laos, present. Latvia, present. Lebanon, present. Lesotho, present. Liberia, present. Libya, present. Liechtenstein, present. Lithuania, present. Luxembourg, present. Macau, present. Fry Macedonia, present. Madagascar, present. Malawi, present. Malaysia, present. Maldives, present. Mali, present. Malta, present. Mauritania, present. Mauritius, present. Mexico, present. Moldova, Moldova, present. Mongolia, present. Montenegro, present. Montserrat, present. Morocco, present. Mozambique, present. Myanmar, present. Namibia, present. Nepal, present. Netherlands, present. New Caledonia, present. New Zealand, present. Nicaragua, present. Niger, present. Nigeria, present. Northern Ireland, present. Norway, present. Oman, present. Pakistan, present. Palestine, present. Panama, present. Papua New Guinea, present. Paraguay, present. Peru, present. Philippines, present. Poland, present. Portugal, present. Puerto Rico, present. Qatar, present. Romania, present. Russia, present. Rwanda, present. Samoa, present. San Marino, present. Sao Tome y Principe, present. Saudi Arabia, present. Scotland, present. Senegal, present. Serbia, present. Seychelles, present. Sierra Leone, present. Singapore, present. Slovakia, present. Slovenia, present. Solomon Island, present. Somalia, present. South Africa, present. South Sudan, present. Spain, present. Sri Lanka, present. St. Kitts and Davis, present. St. Lucia, present. St. Vincent and the Grenadine, present. Sudan, present. Suriname, present. Swaziland, present. Sweden, present. Switzerland, present. Syria, present. Tahiti, present. Tajikistan, present. Tanzania, present. Thailand, present. Timor-Leste, present. Togo, present. Tonga, present. Trinidad and Tobago, present. Tunisia, present. Turkey, present. Turkmenistan, present. Turks and Caicos Island, present. Uganda, present. Ukraine, present. United Arab Emirates, present. Uruguay, present. USA, present. US Virgin Island, present. Uzbekistan, present. Vanuatu, present. Venezuela, present. Vietnam, present. Wales, present. Yemen, present. Zambia, present. And Zimbabwe, present. <coughs> Dear Congress members, the number of present member association is 211. Members not entitled to vote, zero. Members suspended, two. 
present members and entitled to vote 209. I hereby declare that the Congress has been convened and composed in compliance with the FIFA status. I would like to hand over back the floor to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Fatma. So everyone is present. This is good. And this means we can move straight to item number three, the appointment of the scrutineers. And for this item, again, I hand back the floor to you, Fatma. Thank you, President. Let's proceed with the appointment of the three scrutineers to examine the functioning of the electronic voting system and sign the protocol. The proposed name is as follows, Afghanistan, Colombia, and Papua New Guinea. The same process for the voting system, approval, press yes, disagreement, press no, and abstention, press abstain, and submit the button. The text is for the approval of the appointment of the three scrutineers and the vote starts now. Let's wait for the results. And what is closed? Member entitled to vote 209. Members present and entitled to vote 209. Valid vote cast 1-8-383. The vote required for a simple majority of valid votes is 92. The results show 99% of yes, so the motion is passed. Let's now proceed with the appointment of the eight scrutineers. We will count the vote by a show of hand in case there is a dysfunctional e-voting system. The same principle applies, and the eight appointed members are as follows. Jordan, Kyrgyz Republic, New Zealand, Peru, Sierra Leone, Sweden, St. Vincent and Grenadine, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, to approve, and the vote is starting now. Don't forget to press the submit button for the approval of the eight years. Vote start. Vote is closed. Let's wait for the result. Members entitled 209, present and entitled to vote 209. Valid vote cast 193. Vote required for a simple majority of valid vote 97. The yes is estimated at 99%, so the motion is passed. Thank you, Fatma. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We move to agenda item number four, suspension or expulsion of a member. And uh, this agenda item is obviously an agenda item which we never would like to see on the agenda, unfortunately. As you know, the FIFA Council had to suspend two of our members, Guatemala and Kuwait, uh, for several reasons. There is some progress, I have to say, but we are still not there. And for this reason, it is important for the Congress, of course, on the recommendation of the Council, to confirm these uh, suspensions. So we would start uh, with the Football Association of uh, Guatemala, Fedefoot, the Football Association of Guatemala, was suspended on 28th of October due to its violating its obligation as a member association. 
The recommendation of the Council is that the Congress confirms the suspension and at the same time that the Congress allows the Council to lift the suspension of the Association as soon as the pertinent requirements are fulfilled. For the vote, I hand over again the floor to Fatma. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's just revisit the uh, uh, proposal is to vote on confirmation of the suspension of the Football Association of Guatemala, but enabling the Council to lift the suspension once the pertinent requirements are fulfilled. The same procedures is expected. Yes, no, abstain, and press submit. The vote starts now. Vote is closed. Let's wait for the result. For this motion, the vote required for a three-quarter majority of members present and eligible to vote, predominant yes, by 99%. So, motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you, um, Fatma. The second uh, case is about the Kuwait Football Association, which was suspended on 16 of October 2015 due to government interference. Also in this case, the Council recommends that the Congress confirm the suspension of the Kuwait Football Association as decided already last year and that the Congress allows, at the same time, to lift the suspension of the Kuwait Football Association as soon as the pertinent requirements are fulfilled. For the vote, again, Fadma. Thank you. The vote is to confirm the suspension of uh, the Kuwait Football Associ Association as decided last year, enabling the Council to lift the suspension once the pertinent requirements are fulfilled. Same procedures apply. Yes, no, abstain and submit. And the vote is going to start now. Vote is closed. The result will be announced shortly. 211 members present. Valid vote cast 202. The vote required for a three quarter majority of members present and eligible to vote. There is a predominant yes by 96% with 194 yes, so motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you, dear delegates. Um, let's move then straight to the next agenda item, which is agenda item number five, the approval of uh, the agenda. And uh, for the vote on the approval of the agenda, I give the floor again to Fatma. So the instruction is to vote for the approval of the agenda of the 67 FIFA Congress. Yes, no, or abstention, then submit. And the vote is going to start now. Waiting for the result, the vote is closed.
we may need to retake the vote because we don't have enough vote cast. Can, just, can I just remind to press the submit button once your vote is casted? So yes, no, abstain, and always press, and only start voting when the vote really starts. So again, the vote is starting now. Now perfect, the vote is closed. Let's wait for the result. So 98% of yes, so vote cast 192 and yes 189. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, we can move straight to agenda item number Six, the appointment of five members to check the minutes and uh, for the instructions on the vote as well as the vote. Again, Fatma, please. The motion presented is the vote for the appointment of the five members to check the minutes. The five members are as follows. Austria, Djibouti, Dominican Republic, England, and Swaziland. Press yes if you approve. No, if you are against the motion and abstain for abstention, then always press submit button. The vote is going to start now. Let's proceed. The vote is closed, the result to be announced shortly. The required majority is a simple majority of valid vote. We have 197 yes out of 201 valid vote cast. So the motion is passed with 98%. Thank you, Fatma. We can move to agenda item number seven, the vote on the approval of the minutes of the Congress in Mexico City on the 12th and 13th of May. Fatma. The following member association have been appointed to, and I've checked the uh, minutes of the 66th FIFA Congress. Cameroon, Cuba, Fiji, Republic of Ireland, and Switzerland. So the instruction now is to vote for the approval of the minutes of the 66th FIFA Congress in Mexico City on 12th and 13th of May 2016. Press yes to approve, no to vote against, and abstain for abstention and always press the submit button. The vote is starting in few seconds and the vote starting now. Voting closed. Waiting for the results. For this uh, motion, vote required for a simple majority of valid vote is 100, and we have 198 percent, so 100 percent of valid vote cast. Motion passed, Mr. President. 100 percent. Thank you <clears throat> very much for this vote. We move now to agenda item number eight. It's the president's address, so I will just move over there.
So, dear colleagues, dear friends, dear guests, delegates, members of the media, I actually would like to start with, with something that uh, I shouldn't probably really do because, as you know, I'm not always following the protocols. I'm always told the president has to be politically correct. Don't make too much noise, keep things calm, because there will be elections. And if you take positions on sensitive topics, strong positions, if you say certain things, then this can harm you for the elections. Well, I think you know me by now. I am how I am. And I have to say what I feel. We are rebuilding FIFA's reputation after all that happened. We have taken over an organization which was at its deepest point in terms of reputation. Sadly, and we know why. Y déjeme utilizar las palabras de mi compañero Alejandro Domínguez, las palabras que él utilizó en el Congreso de Conebol la semana pasada. Me gustaría usar las palabras de Alejandro Domínguez la semana pasada en el Congreso de Conebol. Nunca más. Never again. Never again. Nunca más. Tenemos que aceptar. Never again should we accept. Or will we accept uh, that uh, money be the purpose, the end, and football the means? Football needs to be the end and purpose, and money needs to be the means to reach that end, the development of football. Never again. And if there is anyone, if there is anyone in this room or outside of this room, who still thinks that he can enrich himself, that he can abuse a football, I have one clear and strong message to tell him. Leave. Leave football. And leave football now. We don't want you. Liebe Freunde, Dear friends, we are rebuilding FIFA the credibility of FIFA. FIFA. The new FIFA is a democracy. democracy. It is not a dictatorship. The FIFA new FIFA is a world-spanning global organization. It is not just an association the limited FIFA is to Switzerland and Germany. The new FIFA is a transparent FIFA organization. Not an organization that is fiddling around with the new FIFA is a decent organization. It is not an organization, organization, not an organization that looks to uh, spend Und money without any purpose. Is an and FIFA, new FIFA is an organization that focuses on football and einsetzt. on the values of football and promotes these. And dear friends, we need your support to rebuild FIFA's reputation. Why? Well, because one man alone cannot do anything. Because we are a team. And because, uh, sadly, the truth is not necessarily what is true, but it is what people believe is true. Fake news, alternative facts, these terms did not exist until some time ago. They have become en vogue in recent periods. And there are a lot of fake news and alternative facts about FIFA as well circulating. FIFA bashing has become a national sport, especially in some countries. And I understand also why. And it was right. And it was right. But FIFA has changed now. This is a new FIFA, we are new people here, and we act with facts, not with words, because facts and actions speak louder than words. 
It is normal that in a big organization like FIFA, there are arguments, there are disagreements, there are disputes, there are fights before a decision is taken. It is absolutely normal. But what matters at the end is the decision which is taken and its implementation. All the rest is speculation. So let's start by speaking about something which is not football, but which unfortunately, due to the happenings of the past, has become a daily business of football. And it's okay, because we have to speak about the reforms, we have to speak about good governance, about transparency, about accountability. It is normal. It is normal. In the past, ladies and gentlemen, many highly paid experts, millions, paid millions, not millions of experts, but paid millions, have been hired by FIFA to help reform FIFA. But let me ask you, what did they do? They simply rubber-stamped a sick and wrong system. It is not me saying it. It is the criminal courts saying it all over the world. And by the way, let me say this also clearly, loudly and unequivocally. A big thanks goes from my side and from FIFA's side to all the authorities who prosecute those who are involved in corruption in football, whether it is in Switzerland, in Germany, in America, wherever in the world. Thank you. Thank you. We need your help to stamp out corruption from football. We cannot do it alone. We have to admit that. And you can count on our help to stamp out corruption in football. Count on us. Well, where were all these self-proclaimed good governance and compliance gurus who were supposed to control FIFA when all this was happening? Well, they all miserably failed. And again, it's not me saying it. It's the facts saying it. So let me say it once and for all and loud and clear. I will, we will not accept any good governance lesson from any one of these individuals who have miserably failed in protecting football, in protecting FIFA, and in protecting football from FIFA. But let's go back to the reforms. Last year, you, last year you voted on some groundbreaking reforms. Some reforms that no other sports governing body has implemented. You elected me as well as president, and I committed to you to faithfully implement these reforms. So let's look at what we did concretely with facts, not with words. We have been saying that uh, for FIFA to regain its reputation, the first step would be to be transparent about its money flows. If we know where the money is coming from and where the money is going, 95% of the real or perceived problems affecting FIFA would be solved. Well, we have implemented transparency in our financial reports. Look at the financial reports and the governance reports of this year. Compare them with those of the previous years. Of course, it's work. It's a lot of pages. One has to dig into that. One has to understand the figures. But look at them. Compare them. And the work that's been done until now is already exceptional. And again, it's not me saying it. It's, for example, the new auditor saying it, or it's anyone who is honestly looking at these papers and comparing them who can and has to say it. We have implemented a new accounting system, IFRS 15. We'll come back to that later during the Congress. An accounting system which will become compulsory only next year in 2018. 
But we want to be first in class. We want to start earlier. And let me say it again, unequivocally and loud and clear. Our finances are extremely solid. We don't have to bullshit you with figures, with artificial figures. We put you the right figures on the table. And it's perfectly normal in a business model like the one of FIFA, which is generating over 90% of its revenues from one competition, the Men's World Cup, which happens in the last year of a four-year cycle, that in the first three years you write losses, and in the, fifth year, in the fourth year you write a huge benefit. This is our business model. Why should we tell you that this is not the case? This is the case, but this is absolutely normal. And at the end of next year, in 2018, we will have distributed one billion more to, for the solidarity payments, and we will have 100 million more in our reserves compared to where we were four years ago. So our finances are solid and everything is transparent. In our financial report, you will also not find any more notes saying 100 million or 50 million other costs. This does not exist. What is other costs? We have to say where the money is going. We owe it to you, we owe it to the world, we owe it to the public. And you can see it and compare it with the past. And yes, the costs for the legal advice and the legal work have been huge, 50 million last year. We don't need to be ashamed of that. Those who have caused that we had to spend 50 million on legal costs, they have to be ashamed of that, not us. We are disclosing, again, the real salaries of the president, of the officials, of the general secretary. Everything is there, is open, and is disclosed. This is transparency, and this has to be recognized, because these are actions and facts. Let's speak also about compliance. It's also a new term which is used very well. We have implemented term limits, because it is important that starting from the president, to all the members, we know that we are here for a limited time period, which has a beginning and has an end. And we have to accept the democracy, which can bring us in and take us out. And we have to make sure that when we leave, or when we have to leave, we leave an organization which is strong, solid, honest, and healthy. And this is our task. And knowing that we have an end, we are working with a different mindset and mind spirit. We've introduced new compensation regulations because there were abuses on expenses. Millions of dollars. We have separated the functions. It's not anymore the president or the council who signs commercial contracts. It's the administration with the secretary general. There will no, no more be commercial contracts between friends of the FIFA executive committee. This does not exist anymore. This has to be said. These are facts. We have been wasting a lot of money on operational models for the organization of World Cup. We have decided to have a new operational model, which will increase the efficiency of FIFA in the long term and save us hundreds of millions. We are doing systematic tender processes for the award of TV rights. Not just select a friend or somebody and give him the rights. We have introduced eligibility checks for all members of all our committees. I don't know how many have been made, three, four hundred, five hundred, I don't know. But over 10% didn't pass these eligibility checks, and they are not members of our committees. We have hired, we have created a position and hired a new chief compliance officer. We have put in place approval processes within FIFA and the administration to know where the money is going if somebody is paying an invoice to somebody else, we have to know who is approving this, where the money is coming from, and where the money is going. This is compliance. We have put independent members in all of our committees, the Finance Committee, the Development Committee, all these committees who are very, very sensitive. Mais, mesdames, mesdames et messieurs, and gentlemen, on est aussi devenu 
we have also une organisation become an organization beaucoup plus démocratique that is much more democratic in its essence and much more inclusive. On a augmenté we have le nombre increased de de vous, the number of representation, representatives of the member associations to the Council, passing from 24 to 37. We have increased the number of women in the Council, passing from one, moving from one representative to six. We have also increased the number of women participating in our permanent committees. We've come from 5% to 20%. Of course, it's not insufficient. Look at all of the people here in the room. We need to work on this. We have multiplied the share by four, but we can do better, of course. We have, I promised you that you have two votes, one vote here at the Congress and also a voice to speak, to speak up here, and the President, I as a President, am here to listen to you, to her, so that you can help me manage the organization. We have set up a stakeholder committee so that we can take the right decisions for the future of football. We need to listen to the leagues, to the clubs, to the players, all of the stakeholders in the world of football. That will help us to improve our act, even if it's not always that easy or easily done. We will also recruit new members for our new independent bodies, judicial bodies, highly qualified, highly reputable people who represent a guarantee of impartiality and independence. But we have also made sure that these people, that these representatives come from all the regions of the world and not just from a single region. We also look at human rights within football. It's fundamental. We need to support, we need to protect, we need to promote human rights. And, above all, we can focus now on our main mission, which is football itself. And therefore, we have increased, together with, uh, with the help of the Forward Program, we have increased investments in development of football. We have actually tripled that investment. And that also is in transparency. With the new revenues we are, and the new revenue streams, we are giving a billion dollars to over a four-year period to the member associations. And we know exactly where the money is going. The money would have been spent anyway, but now we know exactly where it's going, and it's going into the development of football in every country of the world. We are testing the VARs, the Video Assistant Referees, the technological support for referees, because the entire world has been demanding it, because for the last 50 years we've been talking about this, because we've, been, we've said that in 2017 it is no longer possible and acceptable that the entire world can find out within seconds whether the referee has made a right decision or not, and the only one not to know is the referee himself, not because he doesn't want to know it, but because we have prevented him from knowing this. We need fairness on the pitch, and that is something that is important, and therefore we are confident in adopting this measure because, and we can speak out about this confidence because the tests have been very, very positive. We have changed the triple uh, sanction, red card, uh, suspension, and uh, penalty. It's been years in coming. People have been asking for this to be abolished for long time, but we've changed that rule, and we've used the common sense in order to change it. We have changed this rule, and the referees are applying it, and nobody is complaining. There's no automatic red card and a penalty. That is football. That is the spirit that is driving football. We have increased the number of teams for the World Cup, moving up from 32 to 48. Why? Because we need to nourish dreams because football is about that dream and we want to have the entire world dreaming about football and there's nothing more important in football than participating in the World Cup. Even the dream to reach the final tournament is it. 
I have visited numerous countries since my election, and in every country, that is the main objective, to somehow reach the World Cup. Large or small countries. And now, that dream has become closer. And that is also part of football. Well, that's what we did. But I can assure you that we also have some exciting and ambitious projects for the future. We have to constantly assess ourselves. We're speaking about good governance, about reforms. We have to look at that. We have to look at what worked well, what could be done better, what didn't work. We made mistakes. Of course we made mistakes. I'm the first one who makes mistakes. But we want to improve and we want to learn from our mistakes, not to make them again. We have to use common sense, and we will look at this. We will look at our statutes, we look at our rules, our regulations. We will see what we can improve. And we have to speak about women's football, haven't we? We have to boost women's football. We cannot leave 50% or 51% of the world's population just on a sideline. It's not right. It's not right. And for this reason, we are studying whether it's possible, for example, to introduce a new women's world league. This is a project that the administration is looking at. Let's see. We have to look at our youth competitions, because it's important also for the youth to give them targets, to be more inclusive, to allow more participation, to allow more countries of you to organize use competitions or maybe co-organize with neighboring countries use competitions because this makes your infrastructure and your development programs really develop. We have to look at the 2026 bidding process. There is a vote today on that. And we have to make sure that this bidding process is bulletproof. We have to look and we are studying in the stakeholders committee, the international match calendar. Can we do it better? It's not easy to find the right balance between all countries in the world, between clubs, leagues, international competitions, national teams, health of players, which has to be the key factor to take into account. So we are looking into that, we have to study that. And we'll come with proposals. We have to look at the transfer regulations and everything that has to do with transfers to increase the transparency there as well. Discuss it with the players, discuss it with the clubs, see how we can make all these transactions better. In a transfer window there are over three billion dollars circulating around the world. It's a lot of money. We have to be transparent about these things. And we have, of course, to fight against the evils affecting football. No more violence in football. We have to fight for that. Match fixing, we need to stamp it out. Doping, some say it's not serious in football. Well, everything is serious in football. We have to look at it. We have to work on that. And we have to have a zero tolerance policy. And obviously, we have to fight tirelessly against racism and discrimination. That's our duty. In football, the only color that counts is the color of the shirt of your team. No other color. We have to fight for that. We have to fight for that. And there are idiots everywhere in the world, sadly. But it doesn't matter. We can give strong messages with and thanks to football. We have to strengthen our legends program so that they can make our hearts beat more, as I was saying at the very beginning. And uh, I have, as you know me, many, 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 many more ideas which I'm not going to mention here, which I keep also for maybe some other congresses. But what is most importantly is that football is a team sport. I'm a team player. And we will reach all of these ambitious goals only if we work all together. All together for 
football. But be sure of one thing, dear friends. Whatever I do, whatever we do, football will always be first. Thank you very much. So, thank you. We can move on with the agenda. Item number nine, the bestowal of honors. And we discussed this at the council and would like to make, to submit a proposal to you for honorary members in accordance with our statutes. We would propose to you to bestow the honorary membership, the honorary vice presidency to Mr. Issa Hayatu and the honorary membership to Michel Dog, Senez Erzik, and Marius Lefkaritis. Please give me a round of applause if you agree with that. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to these four newly decorated members. Um, unfortunately, Marius Lefkaritis and Isayatu are not here, but Mr. Michel Dog is here, and I would like to ask Michel to come on stage. Please, Michel. Michel Dog is one of the most notable figures in the field of sports medicine. He served as president of the Royal Belgian Football Association between 1987 and 2001 and is still an honorary president. Mr. Dog joined the FIFA Executive Committee in 1988. Dear President, dear members, dear friends, it's with a certain emotion that I stand here because 29 years ago it was the first time that I took place at the table of the Executive Committee of FIFA, looking especially, as you all know, for the medical affairs. And now 29 years later, I tell you, nobody should say thank you to me. I have to say thank you to football. Football gave me fascinating moments. Football gave me the chance to join my two great challenges in life, medicine and football. Football gave me a fantastic privilege to meet wonderful people all over the world. I ask you, leaving the council now today, I ask to my friends of the council and to all the representatives of football, please take care for the health of our 300 million football players. Even today, every month, a young football player dies on a football field. This must stop, and we can stop it, by preventive, diagnostic, and therapeutic action, especially towards sudden cardiac arrest. A defibrillator today does not cost more than $1,000. Please help me so that tomorrow, there is no more problem in the cardiac sector in the whole world of football. And then I think my mission will have been a good one. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Michel. And now I would like to ask Shenes Erzik, our new honorary member, to join me as well on stage. Shenes, please. Shenes Erzik was the president of the Turkish Football Federation from 1989 to 1997. He served more than two decades as a vice president of UEFA until 2015. Mr. Erzik became a member of the FIFA Executive Committee in 1996.
dear president, dear colleagues, dear football family, it is my privilege and honor to be with you today after so many years. I can count on your support, member associations, my dear colleagues in the football federations, and therefore I feel, as I told the FIFA Council while saying goodbye, I feel lucky at being always in the hands and in the consultation with football family. I had been lucky because Fair Play Committee as well as afterwards, which was called Fair Play and Social Responsibility Committee, for some time I had been the chairman. And therefore, I learned and I, been, I have been helped by my colleagues, by my members of the committee, to have the human values at the top of football and together with the football, of course. And therefore, uh, from now on, I will go and stay at home. And of course, of course, if this is not a goodbye for all. Life is full of football. And let's say, long live FIFA together with football. And I am very glad that to see the reform packages are being applied. And we are back to football at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Shenis. And uh, before moving to the next agenda item, and since we were speaking a lot about the legends, uh, we have also a short video on that. Si tenemos mucha experiencia y podemos aportar, pues aportarla toda a, a FIFA. ¿no? privileged position but I know I need to use that privileged position to give it all back. Sim, acho que sim, acho que é sempre importante poder ouvir dentro de determinadas áreas os intervenientes e as pessoas que neste caso it's always important that we uh, know what is uh, said and what we can do for the promotion of football everywhere. Well, thank you very much for this as well. And uh, let's move straight to agenda item number 10. Now the activity 
report. You have been receiving the activity report in a separate booklet, which is in your enclosure A. So we thought that rather than giving you a long and boring presentation, we would again show you just a short video. Well, these were the events of uh, an exciting last year. A lot of girls, women, and of course, Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> there we are. But we, you have, of course, as well to vote on the activity report. So I will leave the floor to Fatma to give you the instructions on the approval of the activity report. Congress member, uh, this instruction is to vote on approval of the activity report submitted to you for year 2016. Same procedures applies here again. Yes to approve the motion, no to vote against it, and abstain for abstention, and finally press the submit button. The vote is starting in a few seconds now. Vote is closed. Let's wait for the result. Results show that we have 198 valid votes cast and the vote required for a simple majority of valid vote is 100 and we have 100% of yes. So activity report 2016 Approved, Mr. President. Thank you, and approved by 100%. Thank you for enjoying our activities and confirming that with this vote. Let's move to agenda item 10.2, the next FIFA events. And uh, you can see them here uh, on uh, the screen. Um, the Congress is taking place now here in uh, Manama. We'll have the best awards in London this year on the 23rd of October together with a charity match uh, of uh, English legends and world legends in Wembley so let's hope we can count on all of you to help our charity activities. We have also some competitions. We had the beach soccer in Bahamas and congratulations to Bahamas Football Association Anton and of course to Brazil who was beaten in the final Tahiti. Congratulations as well to Tahiti. The Confederations Cup is coming up soon from 17th of June to 2nd of July in Russia where all the champions will play. 
Before that, we have the Under-20 World Cup in the Korea Republic. Um, we have then the Under-17 World Cup in India and the Club World Cup in the United Arab Emirates. So we'll come back to Asia quite a few times, uh, uh, Sheikh Salman, and uh, we will see each other quite often on the 1st of December as well for all those who qualify and all those who just want to be there the draw uh, for the, the final draw for the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Then we have some more events coming on in the next few years and uh, the only information there is that the bidding for the 2019 tournaments will be launched this summer and thereafter we will come with some new ideas. Good. We can move to next agenda item, which is 10.3, the FIFA World Cup. And I would like to ask uh, Mr. Alexei Sorokin, the CEO of the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia Local Organizing Committee, to join us on stage. Thank you. Dear Mr. President, distinguished council members, member associations, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be here in the beautiful country of Bahrain and to present to you a, a short update of uh, uh, our preparations for two important FIFA events, the uh, FIFA Confederations Cup 2017 and the FIFA World Cup 2018. With only 37 days left before the FIFA Confederations Cup and slightly less than 400 days before the uh, World Cup, uh, let me assure you that the uh, preparations are at full speed and that we have no doubts that all the works will be completed on time. Uh, first of all, allow me to remind you of the uh, concept of the Confederations Cup. Uh, the opening match will be held on uh, June 17th uh, the final will be played on July 2nd, 2017. The matches will take place in uh, four cities. That is St. Petersburg, Moscow, Kazan, and Sochi. And before we speak about the stadiums, let us take a look at the uh, participating teams. Uh, they are the current reigning champions, Germany, Chile, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, Portugal, uh, Cameroon and uh, Russia as the hosting nation. Uh, as a result of the draw held last year, the tournament schedule has been defined. Uh, so teams will be divided in two groups. All the teams know where and when they are playing. And in fact, we had a, a nice dress rehearsal yesterday night. Uh, the main Confederations Cup stadium is the uh, is St. Petersburg Arena. It will host the opening match and the final. Construction works were completed last December, and the stadium uh, already hosted a few matches of uh, one of the prominent Russian clubs, FC Zenit. Uh, stadium in Sochi uh, has been adapted to football mode after hosting uh, Olympic ceremonies. It was inaugurated by uh, a friendly game between Russia and Belgium, uh, followed by a Russia Cup match. Uh, it will still have uh, uh, one match to go. Uh, the stadium is fully ready, uh, ready to go. Spartak Stadium was completed three years ago. It uh, was hosting games by one of the top Russian clubs, Spartak, ever since. Uh, Kazan Arena, just like Spartak, was completed three years ago and already has a great experience in domestic and international games. Both of, the, of these stadiums have uh, similar capacities of 40, approximately 45,000 seats. In terms of uh, other infrastructure, 12 training sites are ready to uh, receive uh, participating teams. Hotel room inventory is uh, secured. Uh, six airports capacity exceeds the needs of the tournament. Uh, Visa-free procedures will be used. Of 
course, with the appropriate identification and travel documents, because security is one of our priorities. And 262 uh, free, uh, free of charge, dedicated trains are being organized by our Ministry of Transport. Uh, so now let's get to, to the uh, uh, hosting plan of the World Cup in 2018. Uh, the World Cup will take place in 11 cities uh, at 12 stadiums. Uh, the main World Cup stadiums will be the Stadium of Luzhniki, a landmark stadium with a great football history. It will host the opening match, the semi-final, and the final match. Uh, the tournament will be played uh, between June 14 and July 15. Construction of seven stadiums is uh, going according to the uh, schedule. Uh, they are located in uh, seven great Russian cities, Kaliningrad, Samara, Saransk, Yekaterinburg, Nizhny Novgorod, Volgograd, Rostov-on-Don. Uh, they will be completed by the end of this year uh, and will be ready to host games of the World Cup after appropriate test matches next spring. Uh, so allow me to give you a few facts and figures uh, which are depictive of the magnitude of the event that we are preparing for the football community. 104 training sites will be prepared for the World Cup. Uh, among them, 67 team-based camps and uh, team inspections uh, have been fully underway. Uh, your teams are coming, visiting uh, their future facilities already. 278 hotels are now contracted. 27 hotels are, among them are new. Uh, in terms of airports, seven airports have been or are being refurbished for the World Cup and one airport will be a completely new one in Rostov-on-Don. We have processed 176,000 volunteer applications uh, which will uh, bring us to 20,000 volunteers for the Confederations Cup and the World Cup. Uh, they are processed in 15 volunteer centers. Uh, we have the uh, World Cup law in place which sets a legal basis uh, for the organization of both tournaments. Uh, Confed Cup and the World Cup are mentioned over a hundred times every day in the Russian media, so the interest to, to football is there in place. In closing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have moved from projects and plans to actually operating phase. Phase where all the promises made during the bid phase are coming to reality. Uh, completion of all infrastructure, visa-free entry, uh, free shuttles and free dedicated trains for fans are among them. In general, it's a tremendous effort by Russian people uh, which is dedicated to the success of both events. We will do our best to ensure that everybody, every fan that comes to Russia is welcome and has an unforgettable experience. Uh, allow me to invite you to, uh, to our country to watch great football in a big, hospitable and culturally multifaceted country. And here is a short video to prove this point. The launch of this volunteer program is a real milestone in the organization of the World Cup in Russia 2018.
red ball in this case represents Russia. Welcome to Russia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Spasiba, uh, Alexei. Thanks for your work. Congratulations as well already now for your work. And of course, all of you are invited to Russia. The whole world is invited to Russia and you will discover a warm, a welcoming country. You will be surprised. It will be a fantastic celebration of football and of the world. Thank you very much. Let's move uh, to item 11, finance and uh, governance. There you have also received uh, the documentation well in advance. So to start this point, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Alejandro Dominguez, the chairman of the FIFA Finance Committee. Por favor. Thank you, Mr. President, dear Congress, Members, members of the council, please, President, allow me to speak, to speak in Spanish and address the Congress in Spanish. I come from a Spanish and Portuguese continent. So on behalf of that, I'm going to give my report in, Sp in Spanish. But before that, I'm gonna, since we're here to speak about football, and I do enjoy speaking about football, and from, then, from now on, I'm going to speak in Spanish. Presidente. Mr. President. Le dicen que usted es el mejor jugador de fútbol. That you're the best football Probablemente player. de los presidentes de FIFA Probably sea el mejor jugador de fútbol. Uh, in the cohort Pero quiero contarle al Congreso uh, uh, FIFA en enero de este año jugamos fútbol en invitación del presidente, at, uh, todos los miembros del Consejo y nuestras leyendas. And our legends. Y al presidente le tocó jugar con nada más y nada menos que con Diego Maradona, than, uh, el mejor jugador del mundo. Diego Maradona, the best player y su on equipo the salió último. And, uh, his play, his team ayer, <laughs> ayer el presidente, yesterday, el mejor the jugador, the según él, <laughs> volvió a jugar, jugamos again, con Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho y salimos último. Alexander Seferin se retiró Alexander antes de que termine el campeonato. Así said. que, presidente, para el próximo so, torneo, si estás libre, no elegirme. Uh, please, Usted es el mejor. Team. You, even you are the best, yes. Estimados delegados, buenos días. Uh, Estimados delegados, buenos días. Los estatutos revisados que entraron en vigor el año pasado, los estatutos revisados que entraron en vigor el año pasado, trajeron consigo reformas profundas y necesarias en la estructura de la gobernanza de FIFA. Son cambios fundamentales que se refieren a diferentes áreas de la organización, pero todos defienden un principio que debe ser siempre uno de los pilares de la FIFA, la honestidad y la transparencia. Es así con las finanzas de la institución, es con ese intuito, por ejemplo, que decidimos por la adopción temprana de el NIF, 15% ingresos procedentes de contratos con clientes. Standards, uh, with, uh, the with 15 un protocolo que nos permite of, uh, informar sobre nuestra situación contracts. en un modo abierto, fiel to, uh, a la realidad, comparando los datos de cada uno de los años de nuestros ciclos cuatrianiales. Cycles, uh, es lo que queremos para la FIFA. No dejar FIFA. lugar a dudas. Nunca más. Never again. La Comisión de Finanzas, the que Finance tengo el honor de presidir, es una ilustración sharing, clara de ese compromiso. Un grupo de especialistas, ahora compuesto también por miembros independientes. Nuestra situación financiera es sólida. Solid a pesar de que hayamos triplicado nuestra inversión en desarrollo del fútbol para las federaciones miembros, hemos logrado mantener un pronóstico alentador. 
a finales del ciclo, del ciclo cuatrianal del 2018, la FIFA espera un resultado positivo de 100 millones de dólares. Razón, porque para que esperemos un gran futuro seguramente. Pero también para que tengamos muy clara la dimensión de la responsabilidad que tenemos juntos. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias, Alejandro. Y luego vamos a volver a hablar de fútbol. Alejandro, Pero antes de esto, uh, I would like to ask our chief finance officer, Thomas Payer, to come on stage for the agenda items 11.1 and uh, the following ones. Thank you, President, dear members of the FIFA Council, dear members of the associations and members of the FIFA football family, distinguished guests. As you are all aware, FIFA's previous auditor, KPMG, resigned in June of last year. In order to comply with all requirements, the FIFA administration immediately started the comprehensive tender process and invited three major audit firms for a bidding. We conducted a detailed evaluation which was based on a complete catalog of evaluation criteria and meetings with the proposed audit teams. The winner of this process was PwC. According to the FIFA statutes, the auditors are appointed by the Congress. We propose to the Council to provisionally appoint PwC as the statutory auditor and to propose PwC to be appointed at this Congress. I now am handing back the floor for the vote. Thank you, Thomas. So you have to vote on the confirmation of the auditors for 2016, uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and uh, give the floor to Fatma for the vote. Please, let's proceed. Yes, no, or abstention, then press submit and the vote starts now. The vote is over. The result indicates valid votes cast 198, vote required for a simple majority of valid vote, and we have 100. So vote is for yes by 99%. So motion approved, Mr. President. Thank you very much. So we can move to item 11.2 and then also 11.3. Uh, Thomas, Consolidated Financial Statements for 2016 to start with. Thank you, President. Under the new leadership, FIFA strongly focuses to pro provide full transparency on all that we do and to making progress toward regaining the trust of the public. I therefore have great pleasure to report to you the FIFA's financial situation 2016 and the improvements we have made in the FIFA's financial report. Please no note that, as always, we have asked to submit any questions pertaining to this agenda item in advance to the Congress. We have not received any questions so far. Let me start with an overview of the 2016 financial year. There are three areas I like to highlight. First, we brought in several innovations to the financial report in order to increase transparency and to apply highest financial standards. Most important is the early adoption of the new accounting standard IFRS 15. This standard defines how an organization has to recognize revenue. Please take note that this standard is mandatory as of 2018 
However, we have decided to early adopt IFRS 15 in order to represent the full budget cycle 2015 to 18 under this new accounting method. We have also adjusted the income statement and expense categories in order to better reflect FIFA's key activities in the financial statements. Another important step to increase transparency is to align the previous cash methodology of the budgets and to use the same accounting method as we use for the actuals. Second, FIFA's financial position in 2016 is robust. A key milestone was the launch of the forward program, which tripled the direct investment into football and which is reflected in the financial statement 2016. Due to the adoption of IFRS 15 and the increased investments into football, FIFA delivers a negative net result of 369 million US dollars. We are confident, however, to deliver a net income of 100 million dollars at the end of the cycle. The cash flow generated from operating activities amounts to 149 million US dollars and the balance sheet remains healthy. Third, in 2016, we took a series of actions to enhance cost scrutiny by improving processes of procurement and invoice approval, by countering actions we have defined in the cost saving initiative, and by driving a strong cost culture at FIFA. This chart shows you the net result of the current cycle, which applies the revenue recognition IFRS 15. With the implementation of the new standard, the pattern is changing significantly and reflects the true economic situation of FIFA, with the main source of income being the FIFA Men's World Cup, which takes place in the last year of the cycle. Accordingly, revenue will be mostly recognized in the last year of each cycle. The important message to take away is that the results in year one, two and three of each cycle will show a deficit whereas the last year in the cycle will show a significant substan substantial positive result. Therefore, when reviewing financials of FIFA, it's always important to keep the full four-year cycle in mind. Furthermore, it's important to note that the total amount over the full year of the cycle does not change with the Im implementation of IFRS 15. The FIFA administration prepared the financial statements in accordance to international financial reporting standards and presents its financials in US dollars. The financial statements have been audited by PwC, have been reviewed by FIFA's Audit and Compliance Committee, approved by the FIFA Finance Committee and the Bureau of the FIFA Council and have been ratified by the FIFA Council. You have received the full set of the financials in the form of the 2016 financial report. And to summarize, in 2016, FIFA recorded revenues in the amount of 502 million US dollars, expenses in the amount of 893 million US dollars, tax and financial result of 22 million, and a negative net result of 369 million US dollars. The total revenues of 502 million are broken down as follows. TV broadcasting rights amount to 19% or 96 million. Marketing rights amount to 115 million. 204 million came from licensing rights and 17% or 87 million dollars came from other businesses. As I explained before, the new IFRS 15 standard leads FIFA to adopt a later pattern of revenues. Therefore, the major part of TV broadcasting rights and marketing rights will be recognized in 2018 when the World Cup is being delivered. The total expenses in the amount of 893 million US dollar is broken down as follows. The lion's share of the amount investment is into football activities. 17% on competition and events, which include 
105 million US dollars for events which were hosted in the course of 2016 and 37 million were spent in the club protection program. 428 million was invested into development and education, representing 48% of the total expenses. The majority of this item relates to the forward program, which went directly into each of the FIFA's member association, the six confederations, and the zonal and regional associations. 32 million was invested in football governance, and 28% of the expenses are connected to the FIFA governance and FIFA administration, and 3% is related to marketing and TV broadcasting. From a cash flow perspective, 2016 was a positive year. Cash stood at 1,010 million at the end of 2016, which represent, represents a 26% or 208 million US dollar increase compared to the beginning of the year. FIFA's balance sheet remained healthy. The total asset amounts to 3,352 million at the end of 2016, of which 2,371 million US dollar relates to cash and financial assets. The reserves at the end of 2016 amounts to 1,048 million US dollars. This represents an equity ratio of 31%. Now the new accounting standard IFRS 15 for revenue recognition does not only impact the income statement, but of course it also impacts the development of the reserves. Therefore, it is also important to have a full cycle to analyze the reserves. This chart in front of you shows the development of reserves over time. We expect a further decrease in 2017, followed by a significant increase in 2018 when the World Cup is being delivered. Overall, FIFA expects an increase in reserves at the end of 2018 in the range of 1.65 billion US dollars, which is a 9% increase compared to the beginning of the cycle. With this slide, I come to the end of agenda item 11.2, and with your permission, President, I would move on with agenda item 11.3 on the statutory financial accounts. Please go ahead. These slides address the statutory financial statements of FIFA. Please note that this statement shows non-consolidated figures and reflects FIFA economic situation as a standalone association. The statutory financial statements of FIFA have been drawn up in accordance with the provisions of the Swiss Code of Obligations and the FIFA statutes. The statutory accounts are presented in Swiss francs. PwC have reviewed the statutory financial statements and confirm that they are complying with the Swiss law and the association's article of incorporation. The FIFA Council have approved the statutory financial statements. As per end of the year, FIFA's statutory financial statement shows an equity of 82.9 million Swiss francs, statutory reserves of 1,075 million Swiss francs, and a profit of 7.2 million Swiss francs. With this, I'm concluding the presentation on the financial statements and I'm handing back the floor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, is there any question of anyone for Thomas Payer on the financial statements? This is not the case, so I thank you, Thomas, and uh, you are back later anyway for the budget. But in the meantime, I would like to move to agenda item 11.4, the auditor's report to the Congress. And uh, I would like to call to common stage Mr. Patrick Balkani from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Mr. Balkani, please.
Dear Mr. President, the President and members of the Council, the representative of member associations and ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to have the opportunity today to report to you the results of our first audit of FIFA's Consolidated Financial Statements 2016. You will find our audit report set out on pages 103 to 112 of FIFA's financial report. Let me take a few minutes to point out the key items of our audit report. First of all, I would like to confirm that PwC is independent of FIFA in accordance with the provision of the Swiss law, the requirements of the Swiss audit profession and the code of ethics for professional accountants. Now, I draw your attention to the fact that the presentation of the audit report has changed since the previous year. We could say the style is in accordance with new auditing standards to design provide more information about our audit. Our audit opinion presents new information in relation to the scope of our audit work, the overall materiality and, in particular, the key audit matters. An overview of these items is on page 103 of the 2016 FIFA Financial Report. The key audit matters are those matters that, in our view, were of the most significance in our audit of the consolidated financial statements and where we devote most audit attention. We address the following key audit matters. First of all, the fraud risk as a result of the nature of the activities of FIFA and in the light of the investigations against previous members of FIFA executive management, the appropriateness and the application of the new revenue recognition policy given the complexity of this new standard IFRS 15, FIFA did an early adoption of this new standard to increase the transparency. As the third point, the accounting for the financial implication of ongoing investigation by Swiss and US authorities and other legal cases. And finally, the testing for impairment and for unrest contracts relating to real estates. We do not have any additional comments relating to the key audit matters except those disclosed in our audit opinions. As we disclosed in our opinion on page 103, we confirm that the consolidated financial statements give a true and fair view of the consolidated financial positions as of 31st December 2016 the consolidated financial performance, and finally, the consolidated cash flows for the year ended 31st December 2016. Furthermore, we confirm that the consolidated financial statements have been prepared in accordance with international financial reporting standards and comply with the Swiss law. Besides of the early adoption of IFRS 15, FIFA changed significant the consolidated financial statements compared to prior year. I would like to say thank you to the finance division and administration to this effort. On the basis of our audit report presented to you today, we recommend that the 2016 consolidated financial statements submitted to you be approved. The report presented to you today is dated 30 March 2017. We have no further comments to add since that date. Furthermore, we recommend that the statutory financial statements submitted to you be approved too. On behalf of PwC, I should like to thank you for your attention and for your trust. Thank you very much, Mr. Balkani, and thank you also for your hard work to you and your colleagues of PWC. Good, so now we can move to item 
five, the report by the chairman of the FIFA Audit and Compliance Committee. And I would kindly ask to join us on stage, Mr. Thomas Wessel, please. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today my report as the Chairman of the Audit and Compliance Committee on the status of this independent committee. At the beginning, I would like to highlight that independent committee members provide necessary oversight to any responsible global organization. FIFA must continue to support this model and practice. FIFA was unquestionably at the crossroad in 2016. Fortunately, FIFA chose path of transformation to bring the organization up to the best practice standards of the modern sport organizations. It is also worth noting that FIFA has changed almost the entire management team in 2016. I'm confident that this new expert team will serve as the platform to implement the necessary reforms. I must also admit that the reforms are felt strongly, and they should be. Conduct in the past was far from optimal. The Audit and Compliance Committee will continue to devote our time and efforts to make this reform a success. At the last Congress, you voted to implement the new reform package. As part of the reforms, FIFA has undertaken some substantial changes regarding compliance. I wish to highlight just a few of these changes. In 2016, FIFA started the process which includes the creation of a new compliance division and appointment of the chief compliance officer. First was the start of a risk assessment process which will also include the monitoring of the implementation of the reforms. This risk assessment also serve as the basis for the new compliance program. The committee review and strongly endorse the new FIFA compliance division program. This comprehensive program will serve as the basis for the new compliance activities in FIFA in 2017 and the future years. This program will especially be focused on enhancing controls, increasing resources in compliance division, implementing new compliance training, along with the monitor of all the risks. Further, as FIFA opens up the regional development offices, FIFA will add resident compliance officers as well. They will bring the FIFA compliance program closer to you, the member organizations, to better understand your daily challenges. The Audit and Compliance Committee also realized the importance to develop football globally the Ambitions Forward program will greatly enhance these efforts. To support this increased funding, the committee endorses a process that will review 67 member associations and confederations, a dramatic increase from the previous years. This process has already started and focused on identifying challenges faced by a member association and then working together with you, the member associations, to find a proper solutions. I also wish to mention that strong internal controls are key of any well-run organization. As part of the risk assessment and in line with the recommendation of the statutory auditors, FIFA will continue with the process to improve the internal control system. The committee also approved the auditor selection process and supports the decision of the Bureau of the Council to select the statutory auditor. As Chairman of the Audit and Compliance Committee, I also serve as the Chairman of the Compensation Subcommittee. I wish to highlight that the Compensation Subcommittee drafted and fully endorsed the new FIFA Compensation Expenses Benefits Regulation for Senior Officials. Now, for the first time, FIFA has a comprehensive compensation policy that covers all senior officials. Finally, I wish to mention the 2016 FIFA governance report. The governance report was a great improvement for FIFA as this report includes much greater compensation disclosures and other disclosures as well. 
Openness regarding compensation is key as we continue to build the trust with our stakeholders. I am pleased with the work of the Audit and Compliance Committee and we will certainly continue to dedicate ourselves to these reforms. I will, at the end, the recommendation of the Audit and Compliance Committee. We carefully review the 2016 FIFA financial report and notes the quality and the completeness of these reports. Further, the committee finds that statutory auditor report satisfied the independence criteria and requirements of the FIFA statute. On behalf of the Audit and Compliance Committee, I recommend to the Congress to approve these reports. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Wessel. So this means we can move uh, straight to agenda item 11.6, which is the vote on the approval of the consolidated financial statements for 2016, recommended also by the internal and by the external auditors. And for the instruction to the votes on this approval, I hand the floor to Fatma. Ladies and gentlemen, you are kindly asked to vote on approval of the consolidated financial statement for 2016. Press yes if you approve, no if you vote against, or abstain for abstention, and always press submit to validate your vote. Vote should be starting in five seconds. Vote starting now. Vote is closed and let's wait for the results. For this motion, simple majority of vote is required. We have 199 valid votes cast. And yes to the motion submitted by 99% with 189 votes. 198 votes. So motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, we go to agenda item 11.7, the vote on the approval of the statutory financial statements for 2016. Same procedure, Fatma. So let's vote now on approval of the statutory financial statement for 2016 using the same procedures, yes, no, abstention, then submit. The vote will start in a few seconds. The vote starting now. The vote is closed. The result will be displayed shortly. Number of valid vote cast 197. A simple majority is required and the motion has been approved with 197 yes, so 100% of valid vote cast. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Fatma, and thanks to all of you. So we can move uh, straight to 11.8, the detailed budget for 2018. And again, Thomas Payer, our Chief Finance Officer, will present it. Please, Thomas. Thank you, President. As I have mentioned earlier, FIFA puts a lot of effort to improve the transparency of all what we do. 
One key element was to increase the level of transparency also for the budget analysis. Therefore, FIFA had decided to adopt the same accounting rules for the budget as used for the actuals. This will considerably simplify the analysis of the budget with actuals going forward. The detailed budget of 2018 has been approved by the FIFA Finance Committee and the FIFA Council and it now requires the ratification of the Congress. Before we go into the budget of 2018, let me provide you with a four-year update of the FIFA's budget as approved earlier. The overall budgeted revenue for the full cycle 2015 to 2018 amounts to 5,656 million US dollars. Please take note that at the end of 2016, 76% of this amount, or 4,305 million US dollars, has already been contracted and we are on track to deliver the full budget for the cycle. On the expense side, we have a total budget of 5,556 million US dollars and of that 18% is related to administrative activities and 82% is based on football activities. Here I present you the detailed expense budget for 2018, which is in the amount of 2,899 million US dollars, of which 2,079 million is allocated to competition and events. For development and education, 524 million is budgeted, including the FIFA Forward Program, the Technical Development Program, Refereeing Assistance Program, and the FIFA World Football Museum. 35 million is planned for football governance and a total of 91% is budgeted on football activities in the year 2018. 9% is planned for administrative activities of which 41 million is on marketing and TV production and 220 million for FIFA governance and FIFA administration activities. I will not go further into the details of the budget 2018 and you can find all the, all the details in the Financial Report 2016. This chart shows you the overview of the 2018 budget with the revenues of 3,996 million US dollars, the expenses of 2,899 million US dollars, and the net result before financial result and taxes in the amount of 1,000 and 97 million US dollars. I would like to conclude by saying that FIFA is in a healthy financial position by end of the year and we are on track to deliver the budget for the full cycle. We have implemented the new revenue recognition standard IFRS 15 which is an important step for FIFA and allows us to compare the full cycle under the same accounting methodology. Furthermore, I like to recapitulate that IFRS 15 changes means a change in the pattern of revenue and the net result and therefore we should always keep in mind the full cycle when reviewing the financials. And I also would like to reiterate uh, that we have done a lot to increase the transparency of all we report and also internally we have improved the cost scrutiny and in general all processes which are related to money inflow and money outflow. To summarize, FIFA finance has become stronger and this will help us to continually support the growth of the game and the development of football. I'd like to thank you for your attention and handing back the floor to the President. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, just stay there if somebody has a question on the budget. That's not the case, okay, so you can go back to your seat after drinking some water and we can move to 11.9, the vote on the approval of the detailed budget for 2018. For instructions, uh, Fatma, please. Thank you, President. Ladies and gentlemen, we are kindly invited to vote on approval of the detailed budget for 2018. <coughs> Press yes if you approve, no if you vote against and abstain 
for abstention. Don't forget to press the submit button to validate your vote. The vote will start shortly. Vote starting now. Vote is closed, expecting for the results. Results show 200 valid vote cast, simple majority required to endorse the motion. We have 200 votes saying yes to the motion. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much for the trust you are putting on us and on the administration. And we go to item 11.10, the appointment of the auditors for 2017 to 2019. So you have confirmed the appointment of PwC for 2016 beforehand. Now we need to appoint the auditors for 2017 to 2019. The Council, of course, recommends again to appoint PricewaterhouseCoopers for the period 17 to 19. Fatma, we get the vote done. Let's get ready to vote on the appointment of Price Waterhouse Cooper as FIFA auditors for the period 2017-2019. Yes to approve the motion, no to reject the motion and abstain for abstention. Press submit to validate. Vote is going to start in few seconds. Vote is starting now. Vote is closed, ladies and gentlemen. The result will be shown in a few seconds. For the appointment of Price Waterhouse Cooper as FIFA auditors for the period 2017-2019, 202 valid vote cast, simple majority required for this motion, 198 yes, so, motion approved by large majority of 98%. Back to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Fadma, and thanks to all of you. And now I really think we all deserve a coffee break. Coffee break, see you back in 20 minutes, more or less. Thank you.
2016, we created FIFA Forward. It's a new way for us to invest in football development. Forward has tripled the funding for our members. This means up to $5 million per member association are now available during the four-year cycle. But it's not just about more money. It's about how that money is used. Members can unlock grants of $50,000 for various criteria, up to a maximum of $500,000 per year for operational costs. And at least two criteria must focus on women's football. Also, dedicated local FIFA development officers will support the member associations on the ground. Forward is a new program from top to bottom, and it's already happening. Like in CONCACAF, where Forward is helping to set up a comprehensive development plan for young referees across the region. And because every member association agrees to a dedicated contract, projects can be tailor-made to meet specific individual needs. In Botswana, Forward is helping to establish a full grassroots and youth football development program for 25,000 boys and girls. During the process, member associations must publish a yearly audit. And on top of this, FIFA conducts central audit reviews at random. This means more transparency and accountability in the game. Projects like the ones in CONCACAF and Botswana are made possible because of Forward and are just two examples of the many that are already up and running. FIFA Forward is a new way of investing in the game and making a lasting impact across the world. For everyone. Welcome back, thank you very much. We thought that after having seen the finances of FIFA, you wanted to know a little bit where this money is going and the Fora project is certainly a good example for that one. So, let's move uh, on with the agenda. We are at agenda item number two, uh, uh, number 12, sorry, and it's the vote on the proposals for amendments to the FIFA statutes regulations governing the applications of the statutes and the standing orders of the Congress. You have received their separate booklet in enclosure C with some proposals for amendments to the FIFA statutes. We rediscussed this matter, as you have probably been able to read from our press release at the last FIFA Council. And since, as I mentioned as well in my speech, we have to continuously assess ourselves, we will also review our statutes in their globality and see what can be improved. And for this reason, we will, of course, work on that. We have decided as a Council to withdraw this proposal. Therefore, we can move directly to the next agenda item and nothing needs to be approved. <clears throat> agenda item 13, the election or dismissal of members of the judicial bodies, the audit and compliance committee and the governance committee. Since the mandate of the members of these committees came to an end, you have, the Congress has to elect the new members based on proposals of the Council. So, let's start with the disciplinary committee and the Council proposes the election of the following candidates en bloc onto the disciplinary committee. The chairperson would be Justice Anin Yeboa from Ghana. He is a Supreme Court Justice in Ghana. Deputy Chairperson Alejandro Piera and members Joe Strait, Yasser Al Mizehal, Lim Kiatong, McLean Lesuiti, Guy Akpobi, Mahmoud Hamami, Thomas Hollerer, Guoni Bergson, Andrei Pavelko, Charlie Cuzzetto, Teresa Pitkane, Matteo Fabrega, Talisa Coteca, Lord Huila, Jorge Palacio, Leonardo Stack, and Carlos Teran. This is the proposal of the Council for the Disciplinary Committee. We can move to the voting and, of course, if you agree with these proposals, you have to vote yes, if not no, or you can abstain. Fatma, the floor is yours. The instructions have been communicated by the President. Yes, no, abstain, submit, and the vote 
starting now. Good is closed. Result will be displayed in a few seconds. For this motion, simple majority of valid vote required, 196 vote cast and declared valid, 192 for yes, so large majority by 98%. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Then we move to the investigatory chamber of the Ethics Committee and the Council proposes the election of the following candidates on block to the investigatory chamber of the Ethics Committee for a term of office of four years, which shall come into effect immediately. The members are as chairperson Maria Claudia Rojas from Colombia. She is the former president of the Council of State in Colombia, the Consejo de Estado. Deputy Chairpersons Bruno De Vita from Canada and Martin Ngoga from Rwanda. And members He Jiahong, Janet Caticia, Michael Lamas, Jose Ernesto Mejia, and John Tugon. This is the proposal of the Council, and if you agree to vote for them on block, then you have to vote yes, if you disagree, no, and if you want to abstain, you abstain. Fatma? Yes, no, abstain, submit. Vote is going to start in a few seconds. Vote started, starting now. Board is closed. For this motion, 194 valid vote cast, simple majority of 98 vote required to validate the motion, 188 voted for the motion by 98%. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you. 97%. We move to the adjudicatory chamber of the ATEX committee and the council proposes the election of the following candidates on block to the adjudicatory chamber of the ATEX committee for a term of office of four years which shall come into effect immediately. Chairperson is Mr. Vasilios Skouris, former President of the European Court of Justice. Deputy Chairperson is Fiti Sunya from American Samoa. And then the members are Mohamed Ali Al-Kamali, Justice Ayutunde Phillips, Ivar Polak, Margarita Echeverria, Jack Carico, and Flavio Zweiter. This is the proposal of the Council, and we can move, of course, to the vote. As always, <coughs> Fatma. Yes, to approve, no, to vote against, and abstain. For abstention, then submit to validate. Vote is starting in a few seconds. Vote starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, vote is closed. Waiting for the result. Guys, you know.
Number of valid vote cast 194, simple majority required to validate and endorse the motion. 180 votes for yes by 97%. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next one, which is the appeal committee. And the council proposed the election of the following candidates for the appeal committee. Chairperson Thomas Bodström from Sweden, former Minister of Justice and elite player. Deputy Chairperson Neil Eggleston. And then the members Randall Cunliffe, Salman Al Ansari, Jean Louis, Jean Louis Atangana Amugu, Alberto Simango, Christian Andreasen, Larissa Zakharova, Victor Garza, Oliver Smith, Samuel Ram, Dan Kakaraya, Damian Dupiele, and Laureano Gonzalez. This is the recommendation and the proposal of the Council. And we can move straight to the vote. As always, Fatma. Same procedures apply. Yes, no, abstain, submit. And the vote is starting in a few seconds. Now, vote starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, vote is closed. Let's wait for the results. For this motion, votes required for a simple majority of valid vote. 202 valid vote cast and yes by 99 percent with 199 votes in favor of the motion. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you, Fatma. We move to the next committee, and it is the Audit and Compliance Committee. And the Council proposes the election of the following candidates on block onto the Audit and Compliance Committee for a term of office of four years, which shall come into effect immediately. Chairman is Mr. Thomas Vesel from Slovenia, President of the Court of Auditors in Slovenia. Deputy Chairperson is Mr. Christopher Mim. And the members are Nakajima Yuchiro, Andrew Kamanga, Ivancica Sudac, Enrique Bonilla, Rajesh Patel, and Gustavo Favre. This is the recommendation and the proposal of the Council to you. So we can move again to the vote. Fatma, as always. So yes, no, abstention, and submit. And the vote is going to start soon. Vote start started. Ladies and gentlemen, vote is closed. Let's wait for the results. Simple majority of valid vote here again required for this motion. 200 valid votes cast and Motion approved with a large majority of yes, with 194 votes in favor, or 97 percent. So motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Fatma. So we move to the last one, which is the Governance Committee. And the Council proposed the election of the following candidates on block onto the Governance Committee for a term of office of four years, coming into effect immediately. 
Chairperson Justice Mukul Mudgal, former Chief Justice of the Indian High Court, Deputy Chairperson Oli Rain, and members Muhannad Fami Hamad, Fuzi Legja, Navi Pillai, Rainer Koch, Ron Popper, Adela Torrebiarte, Molly Ron, Eduardo Ace, and Felipe Guantuarias. This is the proposal and the recommendation of the Council to you. So for the vote, as always, you know now how it works, I guess. You know it by heart. Don't forget just to press the submit button. Vote is going to start in a few seconds. The vote is starting now. Vote closed. Hundred and ninety seven valid votes cast for this motion. Here again, simple majority is required to validate the motion. Hundred and ninety one votes for yes, meaning 97%. So motion here again, approved, President. Thank you very much and thank you dear delegates for this voting process. This means we can already move to item 14, the discussion of the proposals submitted by the member associations and by the Council within the period stipulated on article, in Article 28, Paragraph 1 of the FIFA Statutes. We have received, as you have seen from the documents, five different requests, which were also then discussed at the Council two days ago. So we can uh, uh, go to the first one, which is the 2026 20, FIFA World Cup a proposal which was made by the Canadian Soccer Association, the Mexican Football Association, and the United States Soccer Federation. And uh, we discussed this proposal. You have seen it in the press release after the Council. And after discussion of this motion put forward by the member association of US, Canada, and Mexico, the Council proposes to vote on the following. And again, this text has been published in our press release. So this is done, of course, in agreement as well with the associations. The wording would be the following. Based on specific regulations to be issued by the Council, the FIFA General Secretariat shall establish a bidding procedure inviting initially the member associations of CONCACAF, CAF, CONMEBOL and OFC to express their interest by 11th of August three months, to submit to FIFA a bid to host the final competition of the 2026 FIFA World Cup. The 68th Congress next year will decide on the selection of the candidate host associations. Should the 68th Congress not select any candidate host association, the FIFA General Secretariat will invite further member associations, including the member associations of AFC and UEFA, and excluding those member associations that submitted a bid initially, to submit a bid to host the final competition of the 2026 FIFA World Cup. This is the process which was uh, agreed by the Council and submitted to you for approval. If anyone wants to take the floor on this, this is not the case. So we can vote on the approval of the proposal submitted by the FIFA Council in relation to the 2026 World Cup bidding process. Fatma. Mr. President, same procedures applies. So yes, if you agree. No, abstain, submit. If you agree with the revised proposal put forward by the three member associations for the FIFA World Cup 2026, the voting process is going to start shortly. Vote starting now.
boot is closed and let's wait for the result. Result as, as follows. Valid vote cast 196. Here again, the vote required for a simple majority of valid votes, which, has, which is 99. Yes, with 183 votes in favor of the motion, or 93% of votes cast. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you, Fatma. So we move to the next agenda item, and thanks to all of you, of course, as well. The request to lift the suspension to play international matches in Iraq. This was proposed by the Iraqi Football Association. The Council discussed this topic as well the day before yesterday, and the Council decided, actually, as this is a competence of the Council, to lift um, the suspension to play international matches in Iraq for friendly matches, provided certain conditions are fulfilled. A strong message from the Council to 38 million Iraqi people who can now again see international football in some cities in their country. Based on this decision or following this decision of the Council, the Iraqi Football Association has decided to withdraw this item from the agenda so there is no vote required on this. And this means we can move to the agenda item 14.3, the request for official recognition of the Palestinian Football Association's entitlement to all of its rights as described in the FIFA statutes. This point was proposed by the Palestinian Football Association. And I invite uh, Mr. Jibril Rajoub, the chairman of the Palestinian Football Association, to address the Congress, please. Dear Mr. President, dear Mrs. Secretary General, dear members of the Council, dear sisters and brothers from all member associations, this is the fifth time that I address this Congress as President of the Palestinian Football Association. Although the Council considers it premature to take a decision regarding our situation. As you will agree, Palestine should by default benefit from the same rights as any other FIFA member. Those rights recognized in the FIFA statutes and respected by all other member associations. Since 2013, the Palestine Football Association has been actively struggling for the recognition which includes the right insurance in Article 72.2 of the FIFA Statutes. Member associations and their clubs may not play on the territory of another member association. Until now, all FIFA initiatives to solve the problem have failed due to the lack of collaboration from the Israeli Football Association and the pressure exercised by the Israeli government and its proxies, including some groups involved in funding human rights violations and war crimes, the Israeli government has even attempted to pressure FIFA. In the 65th FIFA Congress, we proposed a resolution to suspend the Israeli Football Association from FIFA, but we amended our own proposal on the condition that a committee be created to find a football-related solution. This amendment was approved by an overwhelming majority, as you can all remember. 
we are not looking for suspension or expulsion, expulsion but rather the full recognition of our right, including that no Israeli clubs play in our territory, as established in Article 72.2 and Article 3 of the FIFA statutes. This affects clubs playing on Palestinian land, forcefully stolen from its Palestinian owners. The racism and restrictions still affecting us and very little improvement has been achieved. None of you will accept that the clubs from another association play in our territory. And this is exactly what we are looking for, to stop all football and football-related activities run by IFA in Palestinian internationally recognized territories, which was approved recently last December in the Security Council 2334. We all know recent precedents, such as the one of Kirmia, when both UEFA and FIFA acted according to their statutes. In that case, even our brothers from Russian Football Association respected that decision and carried on with their obligation. In the 65th Congress, Mr. Blatter said that FIFA cannot decide about borders and we will agree that the borders internationally recognized are those admitted by the United Nations, the Security Council Resolution, the International Court of Justice, the European Union, and all the countries represented in this Congress. What we are proposing is a football-related solution, exactly as one of those proposed in the report delivered by Mr. Tokyo Sixwali to the FIFA president. Yes, dear sisters and brother, brothers, Mr. Sixwali has presented a full report to the President and we do not know why this report has not been presented to this Congress. Most probably that has to do with the pressure exercised by Mr. Netanyahu, Israel is Prime Minister. Mr. President, what, do you, uh, what are you going to do with this report? We have endorsed the report presented by Mr. Sixwali last 22nd, or the draft of the, of, the, of the report, the 22nd of last March, with just small comments and corrections, but we accept his report as well members of the committee did, all except Israel, who opposed even the, 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 those options, what uh, that uh, kept the actual status quo, because they know that status quo is illegal. In any case, our solution, as the option presented by Mr. Sexual, consists in giving the IFA until the, uh, the end of the season or the maximum of six months to, is, to is engage of all its football and football-related activities in Palestine, Palestine land or face the consequences of such an illegally. This is not a political solution, but a football one, because politics should remain out of FIFA. The only politicization would be not apply FIFA statutes as is demanded by IFA and by the government of Israel, which is interfering in IFA and in FIFA matters in what constitutes a flagrant violation of Article 14.1i uh, of the FIFA statutes. Yes, dear sisters and brothers, as you all may know, Mr. Netanyahu, Israeli Prime Minister, has even made a phone call to the FIFA president, Mr. Infantino, demanding that this item be removed from the Congress agenda. <coughs> and I would like to thank the president of FIFA, who did not accept, but I hope that there will be no other tactics taken in order not to have a decision from this uh, meeting. This intimidation produced results and scared the FIFA Council into asking that you, the FIFA Congress, refrain from deciding on this matter. In any other case, such political intervention will immediately lead to the suspension of a concerned football association, as you all know. I would like to remind you 
of similar cases such as the Mali FA, which was suspended last March of government interference. The Nigerian FA suspended on different occasions for the same reason. The Kuwait FA also suspended for governmental interference. In this case, the government of Israel not just inter interfered in the business of the Israeli Federation, but in the business of this Congress. Is there any bigger interference than this? We all know the answer, and I am sure these actions will be investigated by the competent bodies of FIFA. Such an interference affects us all because no one before prime, the Prime Minister of Israel has done anything like this, interfering in the agenda of a FIFA Congress. Now, going to my plea, what I am asking you all now is to vote on our proposal which is simple to recognize that the PFA is entitled to the same rights as any other FIFA member and to give IFA until the end of this football season or maximum of six months uh, as mentioned in the recommendation of Mr. Uh, Sixwali to disengage of all its activities in Palestinian lands or face the consequences of such an illegality. We are a small federation from a small country, but our belief in the message of football and our respect to FIFA statutes is larger than life. Football cannot be played without respecting human rights. All of us have an obligation to demonstrate that human rights is not an empty concept, included in our stat statutes for uh, cosmetic reasons, but rather a solid value for all of us and the people we represent. So, now it's up to you, my dear sisters and brothers, to make that possible. It's up to you to guarantee a future for Palestinian football, and it's up to you to make reality FIFA's commitment to human rights and discrimination and even violence. I think last month, and I distributed it to all uh, member associations and Israeli forces, not last century, 40th of last century, but last month, stormed a stadium with an official grassroots game and they stopped it by force. Dear sisters and dear brothers, be assured that we will never desist from defending the rights of Palestinian footballers because our rights are not for sale. In the name of Palestinian people and my own name, thank you very much for your support and I would like to add one thing, Mr. President. Last year, Tokyo, in front of everybody, said the time is over and now it's the additional time. The additional time and in October there will be a report. In October, it was delayed to January. January, you said that 30 months, uh, 30 days, and we will receive the report. 30 days passed, and in 22nd of March, we met, and he gave us the draft of his report. I hope that what I heard and that what I read in the, in the media is wrong, that the council convened and decided not even to let us raise the issue again and to remove the other and to delay for next march is it uh, will be written in a language that we don't understand two years and three months are not enough for this committee to to make a report and i myself received the draft and i received also also the final report and i hope that mr tokyo could come and say what exactly he has achieved mr president Dear friends, once again, I want to end the suffering of my footballers. I want also, to, 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 from the other side, to stop violating the human rights. And the UN Security Council and FIFA asked the, 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 the General Assembly, uh, the, the Secretary General of the UN, and he said, uh, sent an official letter saying that those settlements are a crime, war a crime, and the, the, the sport activities there is illegally, and asked FIFA to give a yellow card to Israel to stop that, because it's violations of human rights, violation of you and resolution, and it's a violation of the statutes of FIFA. I don't think that the Israeli 
Federation has the right to keep leading us from the nose because of anything happened to them somewhere somewhere last century. Second, the statutes of FIFA and the principles of FIFA should lead us to decide. There is no argument about those statutes. And I don't think even, I hope that Mr. President, what we read about the council to delay or not to discuss is not true because it is illegal and it's against the status of FIFA. I am a member of this family. I am fighting. I even agreed to amend last time and agreed to delay. In spite, I think that I had the majority. I don't want to cause suffering to anyone, but I want to end the suffering of my people. Platter tried, Platini tried, uh, Kostakis from Cyprus also tried. Whom did they respect? It's the time to say, to, to, to call the, 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 the boy by his name. The Israelis cannot keep violating the restrictions, the humiliation, the racism, the discrimination, the violence that you, you, you mentioned in your speech, uh, Mr. Infantino, is taking place against our people, against our footballers, with uh, 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 24 hours per day. Please, dear brothers and sisters, once again, I ask you, to vote for my right to develop the, way, the game within my recognized borders and for the Israelis to develop the game in their internationally recognized borders according to the status of FIFA. I think this is a very simple and justice request. Thank you all and I hope that this will be the last time to address you about this show crucial humanitarian and justice issue and thank you thank you very much mr jibril rajoub we have received a request to take the floor by the president of the israel football association mr offer aini i give him the floor if you want to come on stage please Mr. Oferaini, is he here or not? Ah, here you are. Okay, sorry, I didn't see you. I'll speak in Hebrew with your permission. Mr. President, Secretary General, members of the EXCO, dear friends, I listened. To the speech of, I still refer to him as my friend, Jibril. It is political from start to finish. The sole purpose of this proposal is that FIFA, instead of dealing with football, will deal with the question of the boundaries. And conflicts of this kind exist in other countries as well. Let's leave it to the politicians to do their work. And we here should focus on football. I do not intend to rebut the president of the Palestinian authority. I don't intend to give him a hate speech in return. You have heard me in the Congress two years ago. I want to keep football as a means to bring people together. And at the committee, I proposed to Tokyo and to Jibril, let's hold a football match between the Palestinian team and the Israeli We'll call it the match of peace. And all revenues will go toward building a football school for Palestinian and Israeli children to use football as a bridge for bringing people together. But the entire purpose underlying this proposal, and if you read 
A lot of subjects in this committee, and the chairman, Dr. Sekouale, will attest to the achievements that we've accomplished. And it's true, there is one item which, in my mind, is not under the mandate of this committee, not under the mandate of this state, not under the authority of the committee or the committee, which is to establish the boundaries, the political boundaries of any state. I do not have that power. None of us have this power. Maybe Jibril has that power because he also happens to be a minister in his government. אבל בטח למי שעוסק בכדורגל אין סמכות לקבוע גבולות. ואני אומר לך פה, ג'יבריל, עוד פעם על הבמה. בואו נקרב לבבות ולא נלבה את השנאה. בואו ננסה לעשות כדורגל בכל מקום. כי הרי מה אתה מנסה להוביל? ששישה קבוצות או חמישה קבוצות של ילדים Teams of children to stop playing football. בזה ייפתרו הבעיות הפלסטיניות? אתה רוצה את זה לא כדי שיפסיקו לשחק כדורגל, אתה רוצה את זה כדי שנקבע גבולות. ואני חושב שהקונגרס הזה חייב לעשות הכול, שיהיה כדורגל בכל מקום, שיהיה תחרויות בכל מקום, ושהכדורגל יהווה קשר לקירוב לבבות ולשלום. לסיום, אני רוצה להודות לאחיי מבחריין. אני רוצה להודות לכם על הכבוד שקיבלתם אותנו פה. על היחס שנתתם לנו, והוכחתם, הנה, שכדורגל באמת מקרב לבבות. תודה רבה לכם. Thank you, Mr. Ofer Aini. Anyone else wants to take the floor on this topic? This is not the case. In this case, I can inform you that, uh, of course, we discussed this matter at the last count. Sorry, there is somebody. I see a hand. Who's the, who? Mr. Ajoub, again. Please. I think, uh, Please, take the floor. I heard this rhetoric speech passionate speech by, by Mr. Ofraini, and here I can say I have no problem to use football as a bridge. I believe in that, but first of all, treat me as a partner, as a neighbor. Let us pave the road for that so great target. Let us have reciprocity in treating each other, but occupy our and occupied, I don't think that we can meet. Please, again, this is a, an issue of a principle. We, I did not come here to decide the borders, but I don't think neither FIFA nor UEFA has the right to fund a illegal, according to the UN and according to the of FIFA, clubs by uh, playing a sport in other federation or other people by force. What is going on in Palestine is a clear-cut violation of the status of FIFA, human rights and, and the, 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 the UN resolution. And no one can ignore that the term of reference for everybody here is the UN Security Council resolutions and not a political expansionist uh, uh, plan. As, as it happens with Israel. We received over any your uh, answer to, to, to Mr. Tokyo. And you are talking about those territories are part of the state of Israel. There is a clear-cut decision by, by the ICC. The settlements is a, cra a crime of war. And here you say, if also I have kids. What happened? Here is the picture. Here is the picture, kids. Here is your D IDF with machine guns. Preventing a grassroots to play, please, and you, and you did not even say one statement criticizing such a thing. Please, please, Mr. President, please, please, this is the fifth time 
I am asking for justice and I am asking to abide with the status of FIFA. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have uh, discussed the matter at the Council. We received a report by, an oral report by Mr. Tokyo Sequale, who told us that um, the final report was not yet ready. Uh, however, yesterday night he tabled uh, his, the chairman's report, which is not the monitoring committee report, it's something different. Nevertheless, this uh, report of the chairman is, of course, to be consolidated as well with the different parties to try to reach a consensus, if at all possible. I agree, Rajub, and offer these topics and this topic should not be on the agenda of the Congress, should not be on the, for the fifth time in a row a matter which is addressed by the FIFA Congress. And uh, at the Council, we actually felt the same, and it was already too long, and it's true we said a few months and a few months, and we never received the final report. Now it seems we are really getting there, and therefore the Council has decided to put forward a proposal and a motion uh, to this Congress on that topic. And the motion states that, considering that, this is not a Congress competence, but a Council competence. We are, as Council, assuming responsibility for that. That a consolidated report of the Monitoring Committee is not yet ready. That more time is therefore needed to evaluate the situation and take a decision. The Council proposes to the Congress not to vote on the proposal of the Palestinian Football Association, to give time to the Council to take a decision before the end of March 2018. But I agree with you, the end of March is too late, and I'm asking my colleagues if we cannot put this on the agenda in October and come to a final conclusion, a decision by the Council in October. This would be the decision that we are asking the Congress to take as a Council. We assume responsibility, we will come to a decision, and uh, we will take this decision we put it on the agenda of our council meeting in October. We would like to ask the Congress to vote on this proposal on behalf of the council. And for the voting, I give there is somebody who wants to take the floor. Yes. Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I'm the lawyer of the Palestinian Football Association and we consider that it's against the standing order of the Congress uh, to put this motion by the Council because uh, if the Council wanted amended, our proposal should have presented an amended and that's as established in Article 7 and 8 of the standing order of the Council. Today morning you, you said uh, FIFA ist eine Demokratie und nicht eine Diktatur. Not das bedeutet, dass that wir müssen that we die Rechte respektieren und solche Rechte stehen ganz and genau in der Statuten von FIFA. So, we need to respect the statute. We present, according to the Article 28 of the FIFA statute, our motion two months in advance to this Congress. If the Council have taken a decision to introduce an amendment, they should have presented an amendment, no a motion. A motion is totally out of time and it's unacceptable that the Council try to divert the direction of the vote from what we have presented according to the rules that govern our association, which is FIFA status. We understand your position, but the position of a decision maker is to take decisions. And the reason why the president got no vote in, the, in Congress is because it has to keep the balance and it has to keep the equidistance among all other members of, the, of FIFA. We present our motion. Nobody, nobody has presented an amendment. 
So let's go according to the statute, according to the standing order of the Congress, the, which, by the way, have not been modified in this Congress, so we still have in the previous one. Uh, let's vote for our motion. If we start rewriting the rules, at the end, we will never know which are the rules, and we will come back to the back, si back time of the dark FIFA, a FIFA who no nobody knew the rules. Please let state by the rules. We have our rights, we exercise it according to the rules, and the Congress should decide. And the Council was able to present an amendment, didn't do it, now have to state to the consequence of not going through the legal procedure. Please, Mr. President, I think we should vote on our proposal. Thank you for your comments. Uh, well, I'm chairing this Congress and uh, um, we have taken this decision and this decision is in accordance with our statutes and our regulations and that's why we are proposing it to the Congress, otherwise we would certainly not do that. This was a unanimous, a unanimous decision as well by the FIFA Council and yes, we take responsibility and we will take a decision on this matter. But before the Council can take a decision, we need the Congress to decide on this uh, motion put forward by the Council. So I'm asking Fatma to proceed with the vote. Thank you, President. The instruction is to vote on proposal of the FIFA Council to give time to itself to take a decision before the end of March. 2018. The same procedures apply. Yes, if you concur with a proposal. No, if you are in disagreement, abstain for abstention and submit to validate your vote. The vote is going to start shortly for this proposal vote started. Ladies and gentlemen, vote is over. Let's wait for the results. For this motion, the Valid vote cast is 188. Simple majority required to approve the motion and we have 73% of yes with 138 votes in favor of the motion. Motion passed, Mr. President. Thank you very much. So we will take a decision in October. Thank you. Let's move to item 14.4, the request to amend the provisions of the regulations governing the application of the statutes regarding the eligibility to play for representative teams. And I would like to call on stage the president of the Cap Verde Football Association, Victor Osorio, who has submitted this proposal. Good morning, dear President of FIFA, Mr. General Secretary, uh, members of the Council, dear colleagues, delegates, uh, with your permission, I will speak in my official language, the Portuguese.
a Federação de Futebol de Cabo Verde, the Cabo Verdean Football Federation, apresentou este Congresso da FIFA, submitted a to the FIFA Congress relativamente a proposal à alteração regarding a change dos estatutos ou a revisão dos estatutos dos or jogadores, a review of the players' status, concernente à mudança de with regard to changes in nationality, poderão encontrar a motivação e os fundamentos the reasoning behind this are sociological in nature they have to do with football but also que foi uh, legal considerations and they're all part of the document that has already been distributed esta proposta foi feita it is a proposal pensando exclusivamente put forward no futebol mas concretamente based only on football, o jogador de futebol, but more than that, on the football que, player. Bem, da FIFA, Because, as was so é ably stated by futebol. the president of FIFA, he is the main protagonist, the Temos main actor of football. A FIFA passa por as we know, FIFA is undergoing profound este changes. É um assunto, uma This is a strategic para cá, issue, certo, mas também para in particular for Cap Verde, but I believe the same applies to many countries and the FIFA confederations. And we hope that it will be analyzed and included as part of the FIFA reforms. Com base nisso, entendemos because of all this, momento, ser oportuno, we think that this is the moment que temos, uh, after lengthy com consultations países, with federations com and countries CAF, and our own FIFA, confederation CAF and FIFA itself that Congresso, to suspend or to remove and this uh, proposal from the agenda FIFA, would be the best measure to enable FIFA through its uh, relevant committee, the Players Committee, and above all to allow federations, confederations, and all the stakeholders to reflect more profoundly on this issue. We think that we need a harmonization in terms of uh, uh, legal uh, principles and uh, regulations esta proposta para o desenvolvimento. And we believe that this proposal is important uh, for the development of football. Aquilo que é o essencial, o foco, always bearing in mind what is essential, namely the football é player. Ver este assunto, we hope ser nos próximos tempos, that this issue em todas as will shortly be discussed and debated in depth by all the uh, interested parties and federations so that we can come back to this issue in the future. Many thanks, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and thank you all. Muito obrigado, Victor. Thank you very much. So the motion is withdrawn by the Cabo Verde Football Association will discuss, of course, this topic in the Player Status Committee, in the Stakeholder Committee, and uh, we will present then a proposal at the next Congress. Uh, agenda item 14.5 was uh, compensation of FIFA Council members and presidents of member association, and the Rwanda Football Association has withdrawn this proposal, so we don't need to deal with that. And we can go straight to the next Congress, and I give the floor to Fatma. Yes, uh, dear delegates, the next uh, FIFA Congress, the 68th FIFA Congress 2018, will take place on Wednesday, 13th of June 2018, prior to the opening March of the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Moscow, Russia. So welcome to Russia next year. Before I hand over the floor to the President for his concluding remark, just let us very quickly 
going through few housekeeping issues. The delegate leaving early today from the Congress Hall straight to the airport kindly proceed to the information desk near the main entrance and claim your baggage. We recommend that you leave at least two and a half hours before your flight departure. If your flight departure is on the evening of the 11 or any time on the 12 tomorrow, please board your respective hotel shuttle bus. Kindly remember to make sure that you return your e-voting device to our staff at the exit of this very auditorium. Once again, thank you very much. And the President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fatma. So we arrive at the end of this uh, meeting. And uh, from my side, just to thank you uh, very much for your patience, for your support, to announce you a decision as well of the Council to provide each association with one defibrillator based on the request of Mr. Michel Doak. Those associations who don't need it, they can give it to somebody who maybe would need two, so we will do that, uh, Michel Doak. Thanks also to Shane Zerzik and to all the others, to all of you for your cooperation, for your patience. We will deal also with the sensitive topics and we will decide them as well. And uh, we will go forward all together. Before concluding, uh, please have a quick look at the last video of the day. Welcome here in Manama, in Bahrain, for the 67th FIFA Congress. We have to make sure that we work, that we work professionally, that we prepare the stage for the actors to shine. Thank you very much. Shukran Jazilan. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. Vielen Dank. The Congress is closed. See you soon.
then we can start. Everyone is ready. Welcome uh, to all of you. Thank you to be here for this press conference uh, after this uh, FIFA Congress. Uh, just for, uh, for some uh, technical information, channels translation, English is one, Francais two, Espanol three, German four, Arabic five. Before uh, we leave you the floor to questions, President Gianni Infantino will make a few opening remarks. So the floor is him. Thank you, Fabrice. Well, welcome again to, uh, to all of you. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for attending the FIFA Congress, for being interested in uh, FIFA matters. For those who come from far away as well, a special thanks for being here with us. Well, you have been uh, uh, following, of course, the FIFA Congress, the 67th FIFA Congress here in, uh, in uh, Bahrain. A uh, lively Congress with some uh, decisions taken, of course, and uh, um, I think that's what we need to look at and we need to recognize as well. Obviously, a few important topics for FIFA and for the future of FIFA. The bidding process for 2026, it's important, it's important that we get that, that one right uh, and therefore we start indeed following a motion of three associations with uh, a process uh, in two phases and uh, this is all clarified and this is actually also based on a set of uh, bid requirements which have already been approved uh, at the last council meeting so independently of the decision of the Congress uh, on the procedure, the bid requirements, number of stadiums and so on and so forth for 26 have been approved at the last um, council meeting which is and was of course important. We have been uh, also nominating obviously the uh, members of our judicial bodies and the independent committees after those uh, after the term, the mandate uh, of the members came to an end after four years, approved by a huge, huge majority by the members, and obviously I am very, very happy that we have been able to find um, candidates who now became members of absolute quality, the best specialists, and also from all over the world, which is also an important element. The names of the people themselves are, of course, a guarantee by itself um, on their qualities. The Israel-Palestine issue is a sensitive issue. Jibril Arjoub said it is the fifth time in a row that he addresses the Congress. But obviously this topic, which goes beyond football, sadly, is a topic that is on the agenda of world politics, not only of world football politics, but of world politics since many, many years without that any solution has been found. We feel and we felt at the Council that we need to come to a conclusion, that we need to come to a decision but at this stage, it would not have been appropriate because we didn't have any final report yet that we could refer to when taking the decision. We had decided to go until March of next year to have a bit more time, but it's true, it's true that we need to take responsibility, that we need to decide on this topic, and it's a responsibility the Council has, that the Council has to take based on its prerogatives and um, therefore we will take up this responsibility and we'll go for, for a decision. So these are the main uh, points, the main decisions. I don't know if I forgot something crucial at this stage, but otherwise, of course, you can... Someone will remind you? Absolutely. 
I count on you. <laughs> so maybe uh, first question, Eric on the right. Eric Bernardo, Agence France Presse. Bon, bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour. Last year, you mentioned, you said that the crisis is over, if I well remember. Last week, I think, uh, Sheikh Al Sabah resigned from the FIFA Council. So, do you think uh, that the crisis is really over? And second question: You had very strong words against the previous uh, management. You said that now FIFA is no longer a dictatorship, if I well understand. Uh, you want to fight against corruption. You were a member of the Reform Commission. Are you le Monsieur propre du football now? No, I'm not the Monsieur Propre du football, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, I simply said, and I didn't say no longer a dictatorship, I said it's not a dictatorship, not no longer, it's not a dictatorship, there is a difference. I'm speaking about me, I'm speaking about the future of FIFA, I'm speaking about the new FIFA. And of course, yes, as far as I'm concerned, as far as we are concerned, the way we are working, the crisis is over. These matters that you spoke about, um, the latest uh, indictments of the U.S., are referring to the past, are referring to past situations. Will there be more things coming out? Well, maybe, maybe. Certainly, we cannot exclude it. But as I was saying as well, we are a sports governing body. We do not have the tools and the means that uh, public police authorities have to investigate and so we depend as well on their work because they can make investigations in a different way that, than uh, what we can do. So I can certainly not exclude that other stories are coming out of the past. But as far as we are concerned and the way we are working and the way we want to work this is not going to happen in the future for FIFA, for the FIFA administration. Because we have already put in place the necessary control mechanisms to make sure that uh, strange things don't happen any longer in FIFA. And as I said as well in my speech, if there is anyone in football who still thinks that he can continue with corrupt practices, well, it's better he leaves. He just has to leave because, as we see, the things are coming out. And we don't want corruption in football because it tarnishes the image of football and the reputation. And, of course, we don't want this to happen. Thank you. Rob, uh, Rob Harris from AP. Hi. Um, so, Hi. question on the uh, ethics committees. Um, could you explain why was you thought um, Eckhart and Borbley were no longer suitable for their jobs and, and also respond to their concerns, the fact that the prosecutions of hundreds of cases are going to be held up now because there's no handover period? And, and, and also whether they're having investigated you in the past, which you were very dissatisfied with, played any part in it, and the fact they were potentially still looking into you on new matters. I didn't get... So the last bit, whether you had any, whether in any way the fact that they investigated you and you saw those as unjustified in the past played any factor and the fact they were still maybe looking into new matters? No, well, as far as I'm concerned, I certainly have no issue, uh, neither with Mr. Borbe nor with Mr. Eckert, certainly not. Um, everything is open, is clear, is free, what I can do. Um, and what I, do, what I do, I mean, I'm probably the most scrutinized person in the world, more or less, I think. Um, so that's certainly not an issue. No, I think, uh, well, what, what, uh, what uh, happened is, is, is a simple question of due process. I mean, in the sense that mandates come to an end. There, is, there are proposals being made. There are discussions being held. And... Uh, the Council is then proposing to the Congress new members. The Confederations propose to the Council um, or and recommend to the Council some candidates. We have received many high-level uh, candidates. 
which is reassuring and which shows, I think, indeed, that the reputation of FIFA is improving, is getting better, because it's also a question of trust of those people who come in in FIFA. And of course, if there are pending cases, they will continue, obviously. People who are coming in are serious people, are people who have proven um, amply their um, qualities. So uh, I think this is uh, uh, you know, a simple question of procedure, a question of Congress. The Congress decided by 90, whatever, 7, 8, 9 percent to appoint these new members. So I don't think uh, uh, we should make a, a tragedy out of it on one way or another. Um, who was saying to me to mor this morning, it's a storm in a, how do you say it in English, a storm in a, in a teacup. In German, it's in, in, in a glass of water, in Wasserglas, huh? in a teacup. I think so. I mean, it's a process, and, a pro and processes, democratic processes, have you know, to, be, um, to be simply accepted by everyone, and, uh, and, and we go on, and, uh, and we work, and everyone works, and independent bodies will work, as it happened in the past, hopefully better than in the past, because we can all do better always. And, uh, you know, we are going forward with confidence. Next question for Tariq and then uh, Charlie Sale. Gianni, um, not a question of those two men, but a question of, about Miguel Maduro. Um, in Mexico last year, when we were um, saying, you know, Mr. Scala made his departure and you said, look, do you think I'm not serious about reform? I've got Miguel Maduro one of the greatest, one of these great uh, Portuguese politicians, I'm very serious, is Miguel. Eight months later, you guys have thrown him out. He found out about this, I think, a day before this, um, this Congress, didn't get on his flight from Italy. And I understand that Miguel Maduro was extremely independent, almost too independent. He blocked uh, Mr. Mutko of Russia's um, candidature for FIFA. He asked Sheikh Ahmed as recently as two weeks ago to resubmit because of what the FBI had found out. There was an issue with the AFC election as well. And he and some other members of this committee have said they've never felt so much internal pressure in any job they've ever done. He said from what I read in the Portuguese press, from the highest levels of FIFA, they were under pressure to come up with different decisions than they could, than they would. He refused to do that and now He's gone and we have someone else. Eight months. Well, I think it's one year, not eight months. Uh, and also there, this, you know, is, uh, is a process. He was uh, elected until the next Congress. And, uh, you know, as I was saying, we are a worldwide organization. We have to take into account all the comments. So some of the comments I was receiving, for example, were, well, look at the past in FIFA, in the past. The FIFA president was Swiss. The chairman of the disciplinary committee was Swiss. The chairman of the investigatory um, chamber was Swiss. The chairman of the adjudicatory chamber was German. And now a governance committee member, he's also European. So these are the kind of comments that we were receiving and you know we have to take them into account with regard to all the persons. We have been appointing um, High Court Judge as Chairman of the Governance Committee and as Deputy Chairman, former Vice President of the European Commission. I think, you know, and this is for a four-year term. What happens in four years? Well, this uh, will be the Congress to, to decide again. Well, but you know, when you have, when you have a job where you have to take important decisions, it's pretty normal that you receive uh, pressures from everywhere. I mean, then you have to take the decisions that you have to take. And I think that uh, the governance committee under the chair of Mr. Maduro took the decisions that they had to take and that they wanted to take um, absolutely 
uh, in the way that they wanted to take them. Charlie Sale was on the list. <coughs> Hi, Charlie. Uh, just two Hi, questions. Charlie. Firstly, on sorry to go back to the ethics and Burbley thing. You just <coughs> said uh, a democratic process that simply got to be accepted. You know, one of your own FIFA council members, the German, um, just been uh, elected, um, told us on the record that uh, uh, Fatma's office knew nothing about it the day before, and basically it was your decision, your decision alone. And he asked us to ask you how that was the case. And that's one. Two, could you explain? Or is, uh, is Maradona, who's given great so credence to your Legends program, turning up here and elsewhere, is he paid extra, uh, apart from the travel allowance and the daily, daily allowance? Because I can't see how such a player would just turn up for free every time. Well, Maradona is not paid. Nobody of the Legends is paid anything except for the travel costs for them and uh, sometimes an accompanying person. Nobody. They come because they have trust in the new FIFA, because they be believe that we can do something for them and we recognize also what they did for FIFA. And I said this last year, I repeat it this year. In the past, FIFA would have had to pay probably any player, not only Maradona, also Ronaldinho or Cafu or anyone else to come. Now they come and they enjoy when they come. And I think this is an important thing. Uh, as to Mr. Grindel, well, <laughs> I'm surprised at what you say because he was at the council meeting. And at the council meeting, I presented clearly the procedure as it went. We discussed it with all the Confederation presidents, and the proposal which was put forward was a proposal of all the Confederation presidents trying to find a good proposal taking into account the best CVs and a geographic repartition. Proposal of all Confederation presidents and uh, of myself all together, which was then approved as well um, by the Council. Philippe Sommer, ARD. Herr Infantino. Mr. Infantino. Der, die Weltmeisterschaft 2018 the World steht Cup, vor der Tür. Uh, der Confed Cup ist praktisch schon da. Um, es gibt ein paar Themen there are a of in Russland, die uh, beunruhigend sein können, Russia, auch für die FIFA, Rassismus, Hooliganismus, dass manche Stadien for noch nicht ganz fertig example, sind. Wir haben letzte Woche mit Herrn Mutko gesprochen, dem Vizepremier der russischen Föderation, Mutko, und er sagte uns, es gibt keine Russian Federation, and he told us there was no problem whatsoever, that was uh, Western propaganda alone, and, uh, and their interlocutor is FIFA, and FIFA didn't have richtig, any concerns whatsoever. Is that true, or <laughs> wasn't he telling the truth? Well, everything is ready for the Confederations Cup. Everything will be ready for the World Cup. It is not yet ready, of course. Uh, but I'm long enough in this... Uh, business to know that uh, um, until the kickoff starts and until the ball starts rolling, there are discussions and debates, are we ready, are we not ready, we will never be ready until the last minute completely ready. And we are never completely satisfied either. I'm a, a, a detail maniac myself. Uh, if I can use this, this word, and um, we certainly don't have just to sit down and rest and say yeah, everything is perfect, everything is fine, there is still a lot of work to do, but we are on schedule. And uh, what I feel and what I can see in Russia compared to the European Championships that I've been organizing together in, in uh, UEFA since 2004, such a commitment from uh, the government, like I have seen in Russia, I've never seen it in any other country. Uh, there is a commitment to do the things, things are done. We all know, uh, and that's probably not only a Russian thing, but a thing for all over the world, the bureaucracy sometimes takes a bit of, uh, of time and there are always hurdles that you didn't foresee before. But even when it comes to the question of hooliganism, uh, to the question of the stadiums and so on, transport, as you've seen also 
from the presentation of Alexei Sorokin today, um, there are important decisions taken by the government with visa-free entry. This is, this is kind of unique um, for Russia and uh, we will experience, I'm sure, a great Confederations Cup this summer and the Great World Cup next summer, a celebration of football and uh, I'm sure you will be surprised um, of the people in Russia and the country who really want to, sorry, I need to get this off, who really want to get uh, and to show to the world that, you know, they are committed to football and, uh, and I think it's nice, you know, these days the world, and you were speaking, it's Western propaganda or not, it has nothing to do with, with, with that. I mean, we are in football in today's world where we don't, we don't know where the world is going. Um, there are tensions everywhere in the east, in the west, in the south, in the north. We at FIFA have to deal with football and not with other matters. And, and you know, maybe that thanks to football or with football, we can indeed try to build some bridges or open some doors and assist a little bit. And what I'm sure is that everyone going to Russia will enjoy Russia, will enjoy football. And in summer in Russia, it's also not so cold. It's actually quite warm. And of course, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, we, we are always putting pressure on everyone, including on, uh, on the Russians to deliver from, from the top to the bottom. And, uh, and we have and we will have still plenty of arguments and plenty of heated discussions until the end, but that's also uh, normal. Then we are a team and we work together and at the end, if we deliver a great event, it will be the success of Russia and the success of FIFA and the success of world football. Thank you. David Harding. Uh, thank you. Uh, two quick questions, if I may. On yeah. the Israeli-Palestine issue, you mentioned taking a decision before the end of March, um, but you also mentioned on stage a deadline of October, so yeah. I just want to clarify exactly which one it is. And secondly, um, you also mentioned in passing during your speech uh, transfer regulation. Can I just clarify exactly what you're looking at? Uh, with regards to that and with regards to the Paul Bog Pogba transfer to Manchester United. And, and is it the kind of fee and the kind of money that the agents get with regards to such a transfer that has made you look in uh, to that issue in particular with regards to the Paul, Paul Pogba transfer? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, on the transfer issue, on the, on the Israel-Palestine issue first, uh, the decision of the Council to recommend to the, to the, to the Congress was indeed end of March the following council meeting. Uh, however, following the discussion and the lively debate we had today, uh, we thought and I thought as, as the president of FIFA, I can't put on the agenda in October uh, this topic. We want to take a decision. We have to take a decision whether the, the decision will satisfy one party or the other party or none or both of them. I don't know. But we need to have a decision, therefore we'll put it on the agenda of the, of the next council meeting on the 27th of October in India. As to the transfer of players, um, I think the, the, the question is, um, is not at all, as far as I'm concerned, related uh, with Paul Pogba. I, I have been reading about that in the, in the press. I didn't, I didn't know, I don't know even if, if, if something is going on on that, on that front. Uh, what I was referring to is a more general, um, a more general question. We have installed, as you know, FIFA has installed uh, for some years now um, the transfer matching system. Um, when I was in UEFA, we introduced the financial fair play question, and that's why, uh, you know, when it comes to high transfer fees, uh, we always said it's not the problem of a high transfer fee. The problem is if you cannot pay that high transfer fee. Um, if you cannot afford <clears throat> to do that. But what I think, simply think is that, uh, and speaking with some stakeholders, clubs, players and so on, agents as well, um, the, the, the general feeling is that uh, there is a kind of a perception that when it comes to transfers and the huge, huge amount of money which is circulating 
throughout the world. I was speaking about uh, in, in a transfer window about 3 billion. I'm not 100% sure if this figure is correct. I just have it somewhere in the back of my mind. <clears throat> These are huge amounts and uh, um, the same as FIFA wants to be transparent in its account. I think it's also a duty for the clubs, for the agents, for all those who, who are serious and that we can uh, maybe come to some better ways of dealing with this. How will this happen? When will this happen? Well, I don't know. When I started to work in UEFA in 2000, this, the, the, the transfer saga, I don't know if, if, if you were there already at that time, the transfer saga was uh, uh, making the headlines of all the newspapers with the statement of objection of the European Commission. This was back in 2000. Uh, and uh, um, we then agreed in 2001, this was my first job in UEFA, we then agreed with the European Commission in 2001 about the principle for the new transfer rules, which are still the same as they are today. And I think after 15 years or more of these uh, regulations, well, we have to look at it. We have to look at the uh, transfers, at the transfer sums, at the agents, because a couple of years ago FIFA decided basically to get rid of the agents' regulations, and we had some mixed feedback about that. So, you know, it's sometime you have to at least, you know, look seriously at the matters again and see whether you can find better ways of dealing with them. Next question for Manny and Richard Conway from BBC, and then we'll go first row to speak a little bit of Arabic. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, Manny Jasper <coughs> from BBC. Um, we've just spoken with Prince Ali, who has... Um, I'm Manny. Okay, I don't see... Ah, here. So okay. I don't see ah, you either. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> Sorry. Um, we've just spoken with Prince Ali, who, speaking as a, as a member of, uh, of Congress, was very unhappy that there is no explanation of decisions by the Council, such as the removal or the, or the, or the decision not to reappoint uh, Mr. Borbelli and Mr. Eckert. He said that was never explained to the members. Also, um, the Israel-Palestine situation, he says, went against FIFA statutes. And he says that this is a lack of responsibility and that FIFA, in your time as president, has already lost the battle to win back public opinion. So if you wouldn't mind giving a response to that, please. And also, why did very, hardly any of the FIFA Council speak to the media after the Council meeting? It was a five-hour meeting, so lots was obviously said, yet they didn't stop to speak to us and the media are the only independent link between the FIFA Council and the football fans which uh, you all claim to uh, cherish so much. Were they told not to speak to us or is there another reason? No, they were, well, we have, I think, uh, uh, FIFA Council members who uh, speak to the media quite, quite regularly and on all the topics and uh, the only thing we ask them is to wait for the press release um, in order to uh, see um, what was communicated on uh, the different matters. Uh, because, for example, when it came to the um, question about the 2026 bit, a new wording was proposed and it's important to get these things right when you communicate to the media without going and, and just saying, well, we are doing a new bidding process but without giving the details and then we start having uh, maybe wrong articles. Um, that's the only thing. When it comes to, uh, to Prince Ali, well that's the good thing about uh, democracy that uh, everyone can, can speak and everyone can have his opinion. That's his opinion which I fully respect. 97, 98, 99 percent of the Congress had a different opinion um, and again we are speaking here when it comes to the judicial bodies about members whose term ended and when a term ends a new term starts so it's not about renewing or not renewing uh, somebody in a position it's about electing somebody for a position for a four-year terms that's indeed what uh, uh, what the statutes say. 
As to the Israel-Palestine question, um, I can only uh, repeat what I said. We were at the Council, we did not receive a, a written report yet. Uh, we couldn't study it. We, uh, I'm also not satisfied that we, 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 we cannot take a decision on this, on this topic. On the other side, we are not the only ones who don't take a final decision on this. Um, so, you know, it starts by the UN and it ends uh, by all the countries. Hopefully, as I've been hearing in the press uh, uh, recently, President Trump is looking at this matter, so hopefully he can find a solution. Um, if he has a good idea, I'm uh, happy to take it on board as well for FIFA, of course. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Hello. Um, Mr. Bobelli and Mr. Eckert say that there will be significant delays to pending cases, hundreds of cases, as they put it, as a result of them not being allowed to continue uh, with fresh mandates. Is that, uh, you know, given that, and given the potential, therefore, for corrupt football officials to be operating for months, maybe even years, is that a price worth paying in order to get fresh blood into those committees? And secondly, just for the avoidance of, of any doubt, there have been, uh, there's been a report that you are subject to a fresh investigation. Are you able to comment on that, rule it out? Because the last time, obviously last year, when it came to light, we were told that the full investigation wasn't communicated. So just to, to maybe clear that one up. I, I have no idea about that. I have no idea. So I cannot comment on something I, I don't know. Uh, as to the, to the case as well, if that's maybe their opinion, um, I think it's a bit sad that uh, there are hundreds of cases pending and they have not been dealt with. I hope that these cases will be dealt with now. Um, as we have seen as well, in all the cases which made progress, quick progress, where members were suspended um, for years or for life, were the cases in which criminal authorities did intervene and interfere. And it's good so, because they have means that we don't have, and we need them to help us. And we help them, we assist them, we provided, we spent 50 million in legal fees to provide to the authorities full reports on the different cases which are subject to criminal investigations by them. So we, they have our full support and as soon as they act and they can give us evidence, um, the cases proceed. This is the case as well and was the case with the old members of uh, the judicial bodies in this, uh, in this uh, in this respect, so I can only repeat and, uh, and reiterate that, and having said that, I, I think the experience um, of the people who are coming in is certainly there to make sure the cases are being dealt with. And actually, I remember a few years ago in Switzerland, there was a debate at the Swiss Parliament for, and this is public information, but it's a report of the Swiss Parliament, so nobody's reading that stuff sadly, um, about amending the Swiss criminal code and putting in a clause um, allowing the state to prosecute ex officio private corruption in Switzerland. The parliament asked several parties to come and comment. They asked also UEFA and FIFA at that time. UEFA went. I was the representative of UEFA. We also put our position in writing at that time and we said clearly to the Swiss Parliament that they have our full support for whatever they want to do to help fighting corruption in football. That they should act ex officio. They have to, of course. We are supporting that. The position of FIFA was not exactly the same. So, you know, I think we need to change this and we need to uh, help those who want to fight corruption in football and, and, and work on that direction as well. Thank you. Let's go first row, as promised, as is. Uh, my, uh, my question is the same on the Ethics Committee. Um, uh, there has uh, 
uh, been a big debate about the, the what's called the end of term or dismissal or removal of the burn. But we, we have read a lot about the new people who are coming. Uh, when you declare the names and we're digging hard to see how good they are or whatever, just read anything about them. But back to the old to, to the to the uh, uh, old committee. Now, after their end of term. They, they, they still have, uh, they are free, independent to issue a statement criticizing FIFA and then they called for uh, um, next morning, early morning uh, uh, press conference and that and they also talk and they send from their uh, 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 FIFA's uh, emails and that. To which, to which extent uh, the, the new uh, group or the new people will be, will be as much independent as the uh, the previous people, I mean, the, the, the outgoing people. Thank you. Well, let me repeat it once again. FIFA has not, and the FIFA Congress has not removed anyone from any position. Terms came to an end. Proposals were made by the Confederation. High-level proposals were, were made by the Confederations. And these proposals were accepted by 97, 98 percent of the Congress. That's what happened. That some of the members who were there and who are not anymore members of uh, these bodies have the feeling that uh, they have to comment. Well, it's obviously sad, but that's uh, that's a fact. I mean. Time is running. Only, only three last questions. Andy Warshaw, you raise your hand. Thank you very much, uh, Fabrice. Um, may I ask, just uh, going back to the ethics, I'm sorry to labor the point, um, Gianni. Um, even if uh, you're, you're correct in terms of, term, uh, terms of uh, coming to an end and others beginning, which uh, we can only accept on, on face value, um, why wasn't, or why weren't, Mr. Eckert and Mr. Borbley uh, told officially um, that they were being, um, uh, their terms had come to an end, they were being replaced and finding out from the media, and why wasn't there a transition period given the complexities of all the cases they were dealing with? That's the first point. The second point, vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Maduro, why is his nationality, and the, of the, uh, why is geopolitics, if you like, more important than the highly efficient work that he was doing. Thank you very much. I said already it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a mix. It's uh, about uh, representation, representativity of the world, and it's about uh, quality of, of the members. It's, it's, it's a global um, assessment that uh, needs to be made and has been made by the Council. And uh, uh, as to the question why people were informed, well, we cannot inform people of something which has not been decided yet. First, decisions need to be taken, and then uh, people are informed about the decisions which, uh, which are taken. And this has happened only on uh, uh, Tuesday, I think, at the council meeting. So before that, nobody can be informed about anything because we don't know where the decision is going. And as, as we have seen, I mean, on Tuesday, we were still, I was still, and we were all still of the opinion that we were presenting amendments to the statutes to this Congress, which had been approved by the previous Council meeting in, in January. We then discussed it and we thought, well, you know, maybe it's better to take them back, to look at it once again, to study it. Why not? Sometimes it's better to make a step back and then, uh, to, um, and then to look and, and then to act and uh, move forward. Two last, Sorry? Oh, transition period. Well, transition period is something that is, is you know, uh, we have our statutes and that's, it is foreseen that one is member until one day and, and as of the next day somebody else is a member. But of course, I think uh, there will be discussions going on. I guess, I don't know, it's up to them. I'm sorry, time is running. Two last questions, first row as promised. You gentlemen. And the last question will be for David Kahn, sorry. For the others. I would like to uh, speak Arab, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Sultan al muhawis uh, from the Omani News Agency. Thank you very much, and I should like to congratulate you for this excellent Congress uh, and thank the Kingdom of Bahrain for its hospitality. My question is the following. Do you have any alternative solution to the suspension of associations and players, and especially associations when there are problems in certain associations? Those who pay the price are the players, in fact. So why don't you punish those who are responsible for the violations but do not punish the players? Thank you. Thanks for the question. And, uh, well, it's because, unfortunately, we cannot yet... No, unfortunately, I take this, I take this back. Because, t I take the, because we cannot punish governments. <laughs> and uh, the problem is that uh, we had to suspend some associations because of governmental interference. When a government issues a law which removes the executive committee of the association and gives the right to the sports minister or to any other minister or to any government official to appoint the executive of the association, then we have no other choice than to exclude the association, to suspend them. And if we suspend them, and we had this case in, in we still have this case in Kuwait, when you suspend them, of course, those who are suffering most are the clubs, are the players, are the fans, all the people. I gave the example during Congress as well. It's a different story. It's not about suspension, but it's about Iraq, who couldn't play international matches for many years now. And you take away the hope, you take away the football from a country, and we have to work against that. Now, when it comes to Kuwait, I want to say this as well. Um, I had some, uh, some meetings here in, uh, here in Bahrain with some, uh, some officials and uh, I'm confident that uh, we will be able to find a solution soon. Uh, the ball is in the camp of the government, but uh, uh, I think that we have been able to explain all the points and I hope we can move forward so that we can lift this suspension soon. Thank you. The last question for David Kahn. Is that a football question or not? No. I'm afraid not. Uh. It's, uh, it follows on from something you said, Gianni. Um, in the bad old days, when we now know that there was a lot of corruption going on within FIFA, at the Congresses, we used to get people standing up, some of whom we now know were actually themselves involved in the corruption, uh, attacking the media and saying that it was FIFA bashing. So what did you mean today when you were talking about <laughs> fake news and FIFA bashing? being a national sport in some countries by the media? No, it's not by the media that that was meaning. Uh, it's, you know, the, it, there are a lot of people who are spreading a lot of wrong and false information. Um, and for me, it's important that when you write uh, your articles, which is what you are doing, that you take into account, you know, really the facts and the actions that we do. That's the only thing I want. And that maybe sometimes you question as well those who are giving you some information because I think we have seen many times that the information given uh, is not the right one but is uh, uh, provided just to harm the organization. One of the... Uh, points that uh, I was most surprised with when I became FIFA president and in this first year is uh, the resistance that there is to change because of course there is a new president there are some new members but there are still uh, people in the organization who resist change who don't want change who don't like change. we are human beings human beings normally don't like change obviously for obvious reasons. So there is a resistance and um, there are uh, a lot of people who are, you know, spreading uh, wrong information just to harm the organization. So this was my um, remark about the, the FIFA bashing.
No, but generally, generally. It's my feeling. Um, we are uh, at the end, and he has uh, taken 45 to one hour, so I think it was quite complete, and the answers were quite precise. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much. Shukran Jazilan.